No, that's fine. Okay. Oh my god, this is delicious. Shall we... Let's do it. Do you want to do it? Hello, and welcome to Anarcha Agony Aunt. Woo! Episode 12. God, time goes fast, eh? It's been almost a year yeah, you since may, our debut. You may recognise the setting. This is where our first episode happened. Um, we have better lighting. Thank you to my wonderful friends for their birthday present. And uh, we have hopefully better audio. To be fair, we were live streaming that one as well. Yeah. We really had very crappy internet. Hopefully getting one. Also getting improved. Yes, as well. Fire so. Optic has come to the outer reaches. Yeah. So hopefully, maybe we'll be live streaming again soon. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, so, uh, mulled wine. So we're starting a winter season, which is lovely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, also, sorry for the hiatus. I guess we've just been... You just started... I mean, the thing is, Marianne was, did a lot of holidays, and every time she came back, I deliberately got sick. And so mm. we had a whole long time of it just not being possible, because, you know, my aesthetic is smoking, not coughing. She also does, like, five jobs and incredible studies and, like, activism, so she's... I don't do activism anymore. Of course you are. God, you pretty... I mean, I don't know how public I can be about the stuff that oh, you actually, do. I went on a demo last week. Oh, please. No. I did. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess I haven't before. Well, we've done stuff in America. America is wild. By the way, now I know we have like viewers from America. Mm. Oh, and maybe what in particular? Who up up up? No, friend. no, 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 oh. no, not our friend. Not not quite our friend. Not no, quite no, our friend. No. <laughs> so, um, yeah. anyways, interesting. Very interesting. Yes. Hello from. It's a wild place. Yeah, it's mm. a wild. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but it's seductive. It's really morbid, but it's seductive. It's, it's wild. Don't know. I might be going to LA in spring, though, so nice. I'll, I'll see that side of things. Mate, we, you and me, we should go, get, like, a red convertible there and fucking go crazy. Yeah. I think we should have... If you're going to go and, like, somewhat like it, or, like, I don't know. Yeah, I'll see. Then we have to go together. LA is absolutely... I want to go to, like, it's Texas, It's ridiculous. Though. I want to go somewhere, like, proper, proper, like... Like real, not real like America. the UK at all. Like, but it's not like the UK. No, it's not. But I mean, I haven't been to LA, but New York definitely felt cosmopolitan. Yeah, yeah, like New London York, is. Like, sure. Yeah, but yeah, I know what you mean. Maybe we'll see. Um, I'd love to go Grand Canyon and stuff. Nevada. Yeah, I want my my parents did that, and it's. That's nice. It's cool. It's grand. Right, guys. Sorry, if you're just tuning in, uh, Anarcho Agonions is a show... I, by the way, I don't even know. Maybe I'm out of the frame if I'm going like that. Again, it's so. a very DIY setup, is, is what it is. No, I mean, the frame went from the edge of your chair to the edge of my chair, I think. We're yeah. Um, well, that was in the photograph. But anyways, so sorry, sorry, sorry. So it's a it's a, a um, anonymous question and answer show where people are submitting us questions about love, lust, and relationships and we answer them but we don't discuss uh, the, our answers in advance so I send the questions to Rome when I receive them and then we sort of try and tackle them and a lot of the time we also pull in you know our own personal experience and we're trying to do everything sort of in one shot I think we might have to cut this in two because um, I just don't have enough space on the device but and I pee a lot um, the one thing we will say, as we always say, um, is we do get a lot of repeat questions and so if you're like, why didn't my question get a separate video, it's probably because we've answered it or something very similar before, so please check out the actual playlist that Mariam kindly made along different themes. And although obviously everyone feels like their situation is unique, and it is unique, but unless you give us specific elements of it that are unique, it's very hard for us to say anything that isn't repetitive for our long-time viewers who uh, lovely enough to watch all of these. Yeah, it's wild. People do watch. Like, we don't have that many views, but we have, mm -hmm. like, over 200,000 minutes now, yeah. which is, like, over five months. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And although we want to, like, treat every, like, question with as much care and attention as, as we can, we do want to also address as many different issues as we can, because that's the remit. So just, like, yeah, please, please, before submitting a question, please. check out the, like, playlist and the other videos that you might relate, because a lot of them probably do. Oh, my God, this is so easy to get drunk on. Because it's so easy to drink. In fact, I do, do make like a, 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 a sick mold wine, so there we go. Right, should we get on with it then, I guess? Yes. Would you like to do the honors? I suppose so. Yeah, why not? <laughs> okay, so this one's... We're so sorry. We actually received this like ages ago. This was like in September. Um, yeah, yeah and, two months ago. <laughs> really apologize, but it is a great... 
20-something cishet male revolutionary activist. I'm getting really into organizing politically with a group of young folks. And I was wondering, is it bad to have casual sex with fellow comrades? Is it bad for organizing? <laughs> have you ever done it before? <laughs> Thank you, guys. Never. I would never do such a thing, would you? That's <laughs> oh, so sweet. It's just so sweet. It's such an, you're such an innocent soul. I kind of just want to cuddle you. I'm sorry, I'm not sounding patronizing, but it's just like, so I have this theory that I always say is just, so people get into labor, uh, get into leftist organizing, A, to get laid, B, to make a career, and sometimes the two intersect. And <laughs> yeah. Um, I will say one thing before I get into like how cute it is. You said you were 20 something, and then you said young folk. And so I just want to like... Oh, age of consent. Not just age of consent, but also like being aware of power dynamics that come with age and experience in the scene. And so before I leap into like, of course we shag our comrades. I just want to be like, how young are I they compared to I wish I didn't. <laughs> Sometimes. No offense, comrades. Yeah. <laughs> offense to some of you, comrades. Offense to some of you, comrades. <laughs> but like, obviously, like, be aware of any power dynamics that might come into play with age and gender and associated things also with being a long time activist is the like initial caveat of you identify the people you're organizing as young folk but not yourself absolutely and you've said 20 something obviously being 21 and being 29 are very different things in terms of relating to young folk whoever they may be is it bad for organizing look okay so it is i think quite naive to think that uh in 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 a place of conflict and constant push um to, you know, co constant sort of oppression from the state and in that sort of exciting environment that your hormones aren't up and you're not just sort of finding people that are in the same sort of solidarity and I guess wavelength as you are and you don't create um, I suppose intimate relationships with each other of course you do like so and 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 I I I think, I mean, again, to be fair, there are some, and I know we're talking super Western activism here, you know, I imagine like, you know, in, perhaps in Orjava, they literally, I go like, no, like, no, no, no encounters, perhaps, Do you know, I, I don't know, maybe I should know, but I imagine, you know, like, no, you take your struggle seriously, and like, you don't, you don't fuck about, which to be fair, I get. I don't get. I, I, as you know, I'm a big advocate of politics of seduction, so I do think that social reproduction have to has to take place and also that like trying to divorce the personal from the political sorry to sound second wavy for a second is like just going to lead to people like ending up in like quite dodgy situations where they can't talk about it their comrades because they're seen as like diverting attention from the struggle yes but but you know like i mean but but that's okay so this is the flip side right as in you and me both and i think many of the people that are viewers of the show would have recognized in their organizing situations where um conflicts that have arisen from past intimate re relationships have destroyed movements absolutely but other things have destroyed movements too like police has what else assholes like assholes mm. usually driven by some sort of jealousy. No, but I say the reason I left the scene three years ago was not because of an uh, 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 a, like sexual or like emotional relationship. But it was because of an asshole ruining my life. So like yes. interpersonal dynamics are the, are the bread and butter of movements, and that does include in a very great extent like sexual and like romantic ones. But it but doesn't. There's more to lose. But, mm, Yes. I mean, I literally just finished, I just, just finished reading this book about intimate, mm -hmm. intimate partner violence in activist communities, so I'm going to be a little bit doom and gloom on this topic Should we put right that now. in the Yes, in the it's social called notes. The Revolution um, Starts at Home, and it's very, very good and American-centric for American viewers. But it looks at exactly how the community is responsible for interpersonal dynamics and how interpersonal dynamics affect the community, which it's, it looks at both sides, and it's very interesting in... Like, yeah, no, it just, I guess I've, I've been burnt, and I think about collectives where that got completely eaten from the inside because of their misconduct, like sexual misconduct, you know, and, and for that reason, I completely see why you would just want to like have a blanket, no, don't get involved. So. Right, but that's it, right? It's sexual misconduct. And my worry, if there was a, sure. a blanket, don't do it, the doing it will still happen, but people can't be open and talk about it. Like not Correct. talking about, about relationship issues is one of the most toxic things, which is why we're doing this show. Yeah. Um, yeah. Correct. No, it's like you can't stop. Right. It's like the same thing about like you know Christian schools. You won't stop having kids having sex. Totally. What you can do is give them protection. Yeah, and the forbidden fruit is mm. oh so so dark. Yeah, <laughs> if someone said I couldn't sleep with everyone on the scene, I would make it my point to sleep with everyone Absolutely. on the scene. <laughs> I mean, I'm making my way around my own small little collective. 
bit by bit. It's <laughs> because there's this band, my favorite band. Mm -hmm. in the, yeah. yeah. Again, as uh, well. Did you? <laughs> well, you wait, made your way no, well, like, I didn't know no, that. No, like two, two out of four. You really? Know? Well, Not bad. I want to say two. Oh, two out of four, and the third one, like, always try, but I was like, no, that's too much. Three out of four is, like, mm. over the line. That's true. That's about seven of us regulars, so I've, got, I've still got some way to go. <laughs> <laughs> Life's long. Life's long. But, I mean, in all seriousness, yes, you have to be incredibly responsible if you're... Um, dating on a scene, and you... I missed this show, I really have! <laughs> this is great! But the thing I want to um, focus on is you mention casual sex explicitly. Mm. So it's not that you want to start a relationship with someone of these Good young point. folk, you want to shag them. Which is fine, and we have nothing in casual sex, we love it. But casual sex is all about both parties being on the same page from where it begins. And if you are not responsible in how you approach casual sex, then yes, you will probably... Fuck it up. And aftercare. Yes. Absolutely. That's something that Rowan has been, has really actually taught me about a lot in the past year that we've been doing this show. Something that I've always thought, but I was never able to vocalize, you know, that feeling, the guilt that you feel yeah. after you've been with someone. And it's because your partner didn't do the aftercare. Yeah. Particularly if you're a dude, and particularly if you haven't said, but particularly if people are yeah, women. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, if they're women and you're a dude and you're older and they're young folk, then you need to be fucking careful in how you treat that, because she, if it's a she, may well end up, and also if it's a he, but someone younger than you, particularly if there's a power dynamic, may well end up feeling used and dirty and all this shit, even if you both go into being like, oh yeah, high five, casual sex, we're so, like, rad. Like, you know, we all think we're so rad, but also sometimes, like, it turns out we've been conditioned to feel, like, cheap and shitty and Absolutely. gross after having casual sex, and it's your responsibility to make sure they don't feel like that. 100%. And, you know, also, like, what, do, do, do you tell the group, or do you not, you know? Like, is it is it... Is it your secret? Or like, for instance, you then pretend in front of everyone else that it hasn't happened or stuff like that. Yeah. You know? Don't treat someone like, don't shag someone and then the next day, like, blank them at a meeting. Oh. Oh. And Again, been yeah. have, have had that done to me, for sure. And if it's going to be a secret, then you both want it to be a secret because it's yes. cute and sexy, yes. not because you have said to them, don't tell anyone about this because of your cred or whatever. And yeah. Oh, God. It's just, it just comes down to consent and respect, like everything, like... Go into it on the same page. If you're sure it doesn't want to be anything more than casual sex, then you need to say that up front. It's just so wild, because this was, like, a really big part of my life a couple of years back, was that sort of full-time activism, lifestyleism, mm. and boys, you know? And it was just... It's so fascinating that people kind of, like, vocalize it as in, like, is it okay or is it not? And I wish I knew all of the stuff that we are talking about back then, you know, because... Boy. I wish my dudes were thinking about it, to be honest. Yes, but I mean, you know, I was also a mess and, like, loved it, but I also, but, I mean, yeah. I mean, we were all irresponsible. I was literally irresponsible a year ago when I did yeah. what I did, you know what I mean? And I think of myself as quite a, like, woke, feminist, caring for everyone, like, social responsibility, emotional labour type person. Well, we fuck up too, is basically yeah. our point. But, um, but basically, yeah, I guess aftercare and pre-care and during yeah. care. <laughs> and, like, even if it's... Uh, I, I want to reread the question because I feel like there's... And also, fuck it, have fun. Like, make sure yeah. you treat them to, like, you know, some incredible experiences. Again, like, it's you're, you're 20. Like, when I was... Oh, I so relate. 20, I don't know. No, 20 something. Again, it's really vague. Oh, is it 20 something? Yeah. Oh, cool. But so anyways, it could be anything you could remember 29. this period for the rest of your life, especially if you are, you know, creating revolutionary actions with people that you're, like, you know, find attractive with. This is the time of your life. Use it well, mm. ha enjoy it, but be responsible. Uh, fucking have fun. Yeah. I'm getting really into organising politically with a group of young folk. Is it bad to have casual sex with fellow comrades? No, but be aware of power dynamics and, like, responsibility and aftercare and just general care and not being a dick. Uh -huh. Is it bad for organising? Can be if you don't do all the things we just said and end up making someone feel hurt and betrayed. Also, even uh -huh. if you do the things we just said, someone might also end up feeling hurt and betrayed because that's just how things go yeah, sometimes. Yeah, no, be aware. Like, that, as again, in one of our previous episodes, I think we talked about, like, is it too close to home to, like, um, you know, shag your friend's friends or whatever? And, uh, yeah, there will always be someone that's probably a bit upset or will create drama or gossip. Yeah. Just be prepared for that, about that. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever done it before? Yes. <coughs> yes, we have. Very cute. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm just going to triple check that this is all recording. I'm going to pour us both some yeah. more wine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oops, sorry. Uh, do you want to read the next question while I'm doing this? Is it the one above? It's it's a new no. slide. I did them all as separate things. You just uh, slide to the left. Okay, yeah, gotcha. 
if you've said the wrong way, it's a meme. One of two and two of two. Yeah, you read the bottom one first because that's just a nice compliment. Okay, but isn't this... Okay, okay, fine. This is all right order. Yeah, yeah, but I feel like there's three of them that were badly similar. But anyways, well, then we'll, we'll just do slowly later on. Yeah, yeah. Quickly, or we'll be like, whatever. it's similar, but anyways. Okay. Hey, ladies, huge fan. Who are you? Tell us. No one ever tells us that they're fan, ex except for like, maybe they've uh, maybe no. they've been like Chile. Yeah. Or maybe there's like four of them. Triple <laughs> A is such a great project, and I found all of your advice and stories so useful and reassuring. Thank you. You're both the perfect hosts. So relatable and easy to listen to. You can keep going. Yes! <laughs> this, please. I just love watching. Please uh, keep up the great work. Thank you. Now, my question for the show. Thank you. Oh. Some know. background. I'm 27, but still have a great graduate university despite having attended for nearly eight years. The hoops and rituals of uni have been embarrassingly difficult for me. I have quit a long time ago, but I'm up to my eyeballs in student debt, so I need a high paying job to survive. I'm overweight and not generally in good shape. All of my friends from high school are married with houses and children. Fuck them. Sorry, I added that. I feel like it must be American. It definitely. Yeah. There is actually there are a few Americanisms in there, definitely. Yeah. I can't escape the idea that I'm way behind in life and that I've got to solve X, Y, and Z before I'm allowed to bother anyone in a bar. Further, my anarchist politics are a core part of my identity and I feel alienated from the people in non-activist circles of my life. What do you two have to say to people in my situation? Okay, so we have covered bits of this before. Yes. We have covered um, about like dating as an anarchist and be like, think outside the box. We have also covered uh, insecurities about weight in this and specific video. Yes, and neat stuff. So, well, well you are in your university, but as you say, you Taken a while, whatever that yeah. means. Oh, oh, about like needs, so people are not in education, employment, and mm -hmm. training. Um, my spec, I know. So, so really, apologies. And you know what? Maybe I'll reply to this on Curious Cat, and we'll literally just put three or four links for you, mm -hmm. just to literally look into them. But um, the one sort of quite specific thing that I want to talk about, and having now found that this is a person that is from America, is that thank fuck you have found us and find this an empathetic project and wants to find out, I suppose, you know, find empathy in, 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 oh, I don't even know, like, okay, to put my cards on the table, I have, as of late, have been really researching, um, I guess, Proud Boys and all rights, and, uh, as of late, there is this new thing called, like, Bronze Age, it is um, that B -A -M, B -A -M, B -A Bronze Age something, or Bronze Age, is it the thing about, like, of being obsessed with like the Roman Empire, that thing. Ish, 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 ish. Yeah, yeah. So basically, strong man, but you know, intellectual, clever, fit. Not, you know, not mm. one of those like whatever, like no lifers. No, you this know. is like Spartans. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. But obviously, extremely misogynist and white supremacist, all of that stuff, of yeah, course. Yeah. But you know, not just like, not some like fucking loser or whatever. But you know, like proud mm. men. As, as one would call them. And I can see the allure. It's like, again, it's just the whole, like, clean up your mess sort of thing. And, you know, there's order, there are hierarchies, the wife is in her place. Basically, it is... And, but you're also... You're, you're very well-read. You will know your, you know, your... Your fucking Plato from your Aristotle. Your you butler know. from your... <laughs> Battle hooks. Your James Butler from your Judith Butler. <laughs> Who's James Butler? Navarra Media. Oh, I was, I was like, is that celebrity? <laughs> No, it's not. Well, some, <laughs> some say, but not us. No. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. And so, so I can see the allure, especially since, again, as the left, we are so terrible at providing a similar type of... Um, Aesthetic. Um, co co cohesiveness. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Form. And also, we do come across as incredibly arrogant whenever we talk about Aesthetic and intellectual endeavors. Like sure. we're on the path of righteousness. Like we need to like cut a bit of the. Like it's fun being an anarchist. It's not. I mean, it's it's also like the path of righteousness, obviously. But it's also fun. Like, and I feel like that's it's like, again the politics of seduction stuff. Like we make ourselves seem quite. Well, but they would say you know it's, their memes are fun. Our memes are better. No. In my groups. Okay, maybe. No, but I, 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 one would argue that meme, the memetics, you know, the memes that we know as now. <sighs> yeah, I, I was like, I said it, and then I'm actually not really sure why I dropped that in there. No, 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 I like but, it. Um, uh, Drop that it again. They actually come from, you know, a very 
Seneca and nihilistic place of 4chan and 8chan that actually didn't have anything to do with the leftist politics is that, you know, again, similar to gaming and that's something that I'm interested in is that, that we realize that that's where the popular status quo is amongst the young people and so we're now to, to cop that I don't think they have they haven't necessarily come from like Marxist left as such originally memes no no not at all originally they definitely came from 4chan but I do think that's like real good no. left meme games meme I games. wouldn't call them not lefties they're, they're basically they're no I mean they're not they're not libertarians yeah, yeah libertarians okay but specifically the one thing I want to focus on that we haven't really covered okay all my friends from high school are married with housing children Fuck I'm sorry them. if you're friends yeah literally like, yeah <laughs> I mean, I, you said you're 27. Like, Jesus fucking Christ. Seriously. I'm very resentful because everyone's been going to weddings this year apart from me. But also, I'm like, I would really find it quite weird if all my friends are married. Like, marriage is fine. It's cool. Whatever. But. Yeah, no. We're no, not that doesn't mean anything. And also, you know, the war is, happens basically. Wait yeah. for the war sees. All of that. But I completely understand, you know, why that would put you in the same position. Also, there seems to be like, you know, you have class insecurities. Weddings are expensive. So they mm. probably were able to afford way more than you are able to. And you're you know, in debt. And, you know, you're like, you're just about to finish. But like, but now you have to because you're in debt. Like, it's a fuck. It's like a mm. cash money too. It's hard. I'm part of a really good Facebook group called That's It and Wedding Shaming, where we just laugh at people's terrible weddings. And you Shoot. can join that for some... Um, Catharsis. Show notes. Okay, so yeah. show notes. That, the book and yeah. the book, and also I have a really uh, excellent article on the Bronze Age. Is it movement? It might, it might be movement. Bam. And but the one thing I want to say is, I can't escape the idea that I've got to solve X, Y, and Z before I'm allowed to bother anyone in a bar. You know how much student debt I've got? Fifty-eight thousand pounds. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, it starts off at 35, but it goes up by a few grand every year in interest. <laughs> I thought my 19 was a lot. Yeah, no, and it's, Fuck you me. know, like, the point is, I mean, we're not in the same context as you, since we're assuming you're American, but, like, if someone is judging you for having student debt or thinking you need to get that sorted before you can date? Well, again, in America, it's way harsher, know, like, way, way harsher. We don't even need to pay this debt. It's like, you're fucked. Like, you're fucked if you don't, like, you go bankrupt. So really, But I there are lots, but my point is, there's lots of people in your position and there's lots of people that wouldn't judge you for being in that position. And uh, lots of terrible people hooking up, like, basically pulling people in bars and they're terrible. So if you could be the nice guy that pulls people in bars, please do that because you'd be reproducing yeah. way better politics. Yeah, watch our videos on how to how to flirt without being a creep yes. and all of that series because like don't leap in straight without an anarchist but generally make them see that anarchism is the way to righteousness <laughs> yeah, we're like, we are quite righteous we're people. super righteous so I'm just <laughs> pretending I'm not I'm like I hate those people I wish I was those people look and um yeah so um I don't know I think from the con from a lot of these things we've already covered, so um, with that, we've just added little bits that are kind of new to this question, but other than that, look. Yeah, look at the neat one, look at the um, worried about their weight one, and look at the playlist dedicated to how to flirt. Yeah, and, okay, I, and that's, that's another thing. You were talking about, you know, your shape or whatever, and this is what we talked about in previous episodes, mm -hmm. just like, I think it's incredible when people like, you know, are from, the, I suppose, not the stereotypically admired shape, and own it, and love it, and, and like, you know, are fucking confident and attractive like dress well uh, dress well, well fit in clothes anyway mm. and, and and that but it seems to me like you don't feel like you are in the right body for yourself there are ways to solve that as such but saying that like you know i have body confidence issues and feel like i look shit sometimes mariam i'm sure does as well like that that is a part of being human and yes. i'm not trying to say that you should just magically get over not feeling good because you won't and it's a work in progress for all of us because we are all dealing with separate and societal demons on these topics based on like supposed norms and also our own internalized norms and all this shit and, and everyone it's else feels that way again now yeah. having been to los angeles and seeing like all these supposedly already beautiful people still doing liposuction mm -hmm. still putting stuff in their faces and it's just like mate like you're gorgeous yeah. oh my days it doesn't end yeah 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 like i mean the look now is not just like being naturally beautiful, you have to buff it up in some sort of way mm. anyway. So just, ugh. Nothing's enough anymore, it's no. bullshit. I'm just gonna quickly, quickly check that it's all running. But it looks like, yeah, it's cute. Yep. Yeah, it's all cute. Right. Okay, so yeah, that's that. Sorry for the short one, but we, yeah, we don't wanna reinvent the wheel. Again, just to quickly, uh, while I'm searching for the next one, um, you know, we're only doing this, this, um, project for as long as it's fun for the both of us and and we've received like 23 questions i think so we won't even be able to cover all of them and like sorry but it's kind of not our job like we're trying to and so we're thankful for your viewership as such but we're, as in like we don't get anything from this like there were a few lovely people and you know who you are who have sent us like you know 20 dollars that 15 dollars that and like 
I think we made, I think we said we made maybe like, I don't know, I'm going to say like 100, 150 pounds each. Yeah, and that's maybe? in 12 episodes, each lasting about three hours. Yeah. So. And also now, this is yes. why we got this mic We have here. a specific request for those of you who can donate and this will benefit you and us. And because basically the only thing, like, we use the thing that we need for is this project. Everything else Marianne can do with one microphone. Yes. What is it called? I was going to say a splitter oh, thingy. Uh, it's a splitter thingy. It's where we can plug both microphones in at once because one of the, the, the splitter thingy is broken. Yeah, we basically have two mics, but uh, for some reason, only it, the, 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 both of my laptops are only finding the one as such, so basically my splitter is broken. Yeah. And so uh, that's been, yeah. yeah, so, 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 I mean, that's not a lot of money. We have a specific but... fundraising request that is g only going towards <laughs> this program. <laughs> like, it goes towards nothing else, so find it in your heart to... Yeah, please. only if you can afford it. Yes. Just send a couple of quick, please. Um, water, where did I put it? There we go. Okay. Let's go. Next question. Hey, I found your, you via Combabe Clem and oh. have enjoyed what I've seen of your show so far. Thanks. If you haven't watched Com Babe, Com Babe Clem, you should. Mariam guest starred. It's a very, very cool show where she talks about um, politics whilst doing makeup tutorials. I mean, what is not like to like about that? Absolutely. No, she, she's fucking rad. And again, we'll put that in the show notes. Yeah. And thank you so much for having me as well. And the fact that people have handled the show through that. Yeah, that's lovely. Um, yeah, nice. anyone who hasn't watched that, you should. Because like, if you're like me, you get I get kind of like... I used to watch... Um, before I'd heard what ASMR is... I used to watch makeup videos just to get that tingly feeling in the back of my head. You like ASMR? Oh, I never knew what it was. Uh, but I used to watch makeup videos and get this like tingly feeling and I was like, oh, this is really great. It's like a head orgasm. And then I found out it was this whole thing called ASMR. But what, do you like ASMR? Do you mean do I like it? It sickens me. I can't. Oh, I like, I like the feeling I get from watching makeup videos. Makeup videos, yeah, but you know there are specific ASMR yeah, yeah, videos yeah. now. I can't. Like, I did one with my VR headset. So it was super weird. She like rubbed it with a um, like makeup brush, like, and it felt like in my Ilfric way. That's nice, but it's the one where they like eat and shit, and like oh, do no. like chewing gum and stuff. I'm like, no, the ones I do is whispering and brushing things. Okay. And like gotcha. making and like making cuts in sand. Okay, yeah, no, that that. I There's loads of different ones from people. Like I have a the friend who ones. does it with um, wood wood cutting. Gives him the same. Okay. <laughs> the, okay. The man version. I get. <laughs> Uh, you know, having spent years in squats around a lot of middle class people that are trying to rebel against the, the etiquette of their very posh households, they will burp all the time and they will, you know, uh, eat with their mouths open, you know, make all the sounds. No, I've never and seen I'm just them. Like, and, and, and apparently this is now a trend and I really, I hate this word, but like, well, not word, but anyways, I, it does trigger me, like, because I know, well, again, growing up, because you yeah. are working class, you you're like, this you're, previous one, yeah, yeah, you're taught more, like, um, not ethics, fucking etiquette. Etiquette. And so you want to behave well, but all these people, they're just like, no. No, I haven't seen those types. There's loads of different types. The ones I've seen is crinkling paper and also makeup tutorials. Yeah. So my point is, if you like having a head orgasm and also rad politics, you should watch Combo Club. Mm -hmm. So Nick, rest of the question. I'm a straight male who went to an all boys school and grew up with few family members or friends who are women close to my age. Like many others who've asked questions here, I'm also on the autism spectrum. Together, all these issues have impaired my social skills in contacting women as friends and making clear non-romantic intentions. When I first started university, I often suggested to women I liked as friends that we met up privately, much as I do for potential male friends, which I now regret, knowing how uncomfortable I realised many of them definitely felt from the date vibes I was giving off. Did you go like, you know, you and me, we should hang out privately? Okay, I'm sorry, that probably sounded bad, but I hope you didn't I've do that, just, basically. I've read many stories from women, mainly on the left, of course, who've been very open post Me Too about the kind of discomfort situations I guess have caused them. Now I'm about to re-enter university again and hopefully make new friends of all genders. I'd love to know some tips on how to respectfully develop friendships with women without making them feel uncomfortable. Thank you. I think that's really great because it's not about romantic intention and it's just about friendships and we haven't really had a question about just friendships which is really That's quite true. cool that is cool that is cool and you use very like cool inclusive language and you were very like self-reflective and about your past behaviors and i think you seem like a really rad person yeah it's just like be on it i would not phrase it like mariam said as would you like to hang out privately i also feel like if you phrase it to a male friend he might also find that a bit odd because it's just a strange phrasing yeah, but it's so tricky, right? Okay, so these are the qu okay. So this is where like two drunk cis white girls are, you know, that are hitting a hitting a lot of our limitations as such. It's like we again, we're very thankful that we're receiving a lot of questions from people with mental health issues. And the one with you know where it was to do with Asperger's, we you know asked our 
uh, our pals that 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 deal with that and so you know for tips and advices and that well don't deal with that actually our fucking legends this because is different because it's how the women feel right we have to put ourselves in shoes of how we'd like to be approached as friends yeah but like oh, basically oh, it's very easy for me my point is it's like it's very easy for me to say hey but you know just phrase it like that or you know just be casual like that or just say like that but I can see how like for you that will still be an act and then you'll be worried what if other perceive other person perceives it as an act you know so of course we can give tips and we're definitely going to get that now but it's it's still so performative and it's just it's, it's yeah it's just because it kind of has to be, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think we can try and think of some clear directives, though, because I think that's what um, people so often find spaces, helpful. So public spaces, perhaps per, per, perhaps begin any friendship with hanging out in public spaces, yes. whether that's park, you know, or, or um, I don't know, I, 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 yeah. I, a museum, a busy calf. There we go. But yeah, so that, that's a good beginning and sort of an intention to show that really this is just like a friendly thing as such. Yeah. I mean, also, you can, honestly, you have to be up front and say... I don't want to sound like I'm coming on to you. Yeah, I just really like your company and it would be really cool if we could hang out sometime. Like, absolutely, just, you can just say that and I, would, as a woman, would really appreciate someone just saying that. Yeah. And, and also really be nice. like, I don't really know how to phrase this. And also fucking like, just say, look, hey, I, I'm finding it difficult. Or, or like, fuck it, say like, you know, I ha- I'm on, on the spectrum, I find it difficult to phrase these things. So, but basically, I think you're great. I don't think there are many that, that many great people are out. We should hang out. Yeah. As friends, um, and, yeah. and and if and all you that. want is friendship, and it sounds like that's all you want, then you can genuinely just say that because I love it. I love when people want to be my friend. It's so rare that someone says, "I really like you. Let's hang out." Even as friends, there's so much dancing around no. and being like, "I." Re- it was my birthday recently, and I had this whole anxiety of like, "Can I invite these people to my party? I've only met them twice. Will they think it's weird?" And it's fucking nonsense. I love it when someone I've only met twice invites me to a yes. party. So I'm like, wow. I really like them. They really like me. This is really cool. Yeah, there aren't that many great people around. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, someone said to me... And ask them like questions, you. you know? That's always nice for people to receive, you know? That, like, you're curious about them. And But if you are asking questions, make sure you actually are asking them because you want to know the answer and not just, like... Yes. Mm-hmm. Next question. Mm-hmm. I'm going through the motions of doing it. Like, if these are people you're interested in, be interested in them. Well, but then again, you, you, I agree, but... I, I also recognize as well when people do learn a routine that is helpful for them, but I so appreciate that they even have done that, you mm. know? So so that's okay, too. It is okay. As it's in just... they're creating that effort of even applying a certain routine on you. But I definitely have had situations where men have asked me questions just... And then, like, not and just so they can do the thing. But that's normally, again, when they're trying to hit on me and are just trying to show that they're interested before they get down yeah. to the whole, like, dick thing. So... Yeah, be sincere, be open, say, I just want to hang out with you, like, as a friend, I think you're rad. And also, okay, really crucially, just because some of them won't work out, that doesn't mean that the next one won't. Like, this happens yes. to everyone all the time. Oh my God, the amount of times happened to me where it's just like, I recognize someone and I go really deep in because, I don't know, I just, I don't fuck about that. I think life is short. I go like, I think you're great. I think there aren't, the, yeah, I think everyone kind of sucks. We should be hanging out. And they're like, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, maybe. Or like, yeah, for real. So I'm like, well, I think we should really hang out. Because mm. like everyone, yeah, it's just, this seems, there seems to be, you know, we click, we like each other. We There's humor in our conversations. And it's like, yeah, yeah. And then you actually kind of, not, not necessarily, you know, you don't hear from them again, but it's really just because, you know, life gets in the way. Yeah. I've also done that as well, you know. I've also done that as well. Some of my best friends, I ghost for months just because <sighs> life is big and London is big. Yeah. And it's, it is hard to so, even, like, even, yeah. even if they do seem like they're blowing you off, they might not even mean it's because they don't want to be your friend and they might just be having a time where they need to, like, Absolutely. borrow. So do not take that personally. So, yeah, like... If even if you like apply all of our advice here and then you like you make an effort on that particular one day with that particular one person and it doesn't go your way, please don't think that's it as such. Yeah. But also if someone is definitely not interested, then don't push it. Yeah. Well yeah. I guess so. But I also I can't think of a single person that's made an effort to be my friend and seemed genuinely interested in me that I haven't also wanted to follow up with. Which yeah. is kind of I mean, honestly everyone likes flattery. Or maybe it's just me, but I like flattery. If someone really wants to be my friend, I'm like, help them, yeah. Mm, yes, but even just today, actually. <laughs> I don't know how to talk about this. So today I tweeted, and it kind of got a lot of, like... Oh, well, the kind of, boring thing. But it, okay, so it's interesting. And I think it is sometimes a class issue, but I know, like, I have found, as of late, and I guess this is maybe part of being, like, in the public eye of some sorts, um, people want to hang out, and it's great, and we do, and honestly, like... 
I've met so many people through Twitter in the past couple of, of years and literally just being like DMing each other, yeah, let's meet up and, da -da -da. and some of those relationships go really great and we continue them and I've met so many amazing people and such incredible opportunities through that. But every now and then, there, there, you know, you meet people and it, it's just like, I'm making all the effort, I have all the yes. stories, I feel like I'm making their life exciting. And you don't fetishize someone. And, and, I, and, and I get, yeah, I kind of, I make, yeah, and, and they're not really asking questions. I'm that, I don't know, kind of creating, I feel like I'm working to make them feel better. I don't know, like, to make them have stories. Yes. And, 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 and my question was like, oh, you know, like, is, is being interesting a privilege? And a lot of people were like, you know, but what is interesting to one person is different from what is interesting to the other, which is absolutely a fair point. I just, I, I, I think if people are not necessarily putting the effort or feel entitled to other people's time and or are not curious and or, yeah, I don't know, that, that, that there is, I mean, again, there, there is the ob objective stereotypical way of to be, I guess, I don't know, whatever, beautiful. And then there's the stereotypical objective way to be interesting, which is just, I suppose, have stuff to say and have yeah, stories. But... And if you don't, but again, even if you don't, they're like, be open and self-deprecating about that or so. And I don't know, I just, but there have been a few meetups where I'm just like, well, that was a waste of time. And I probably gave them a bunch of stories and they're like millionaires <laughs> all yes. the time. And I'm like, yeah, I've earned like 11,000 pounds less, yeah. Sure. And I buy the drinks! Yeah. Fuck you! <laughs> yeah, take into account class, obviously. No, but like, whatever. Anyway, yeah, do. So, no, but sometimes, seriously, I find like a lot of, there are a lot of people that are like feeling entitled to right, be but entertained, that comes, basically. But that comes down to like, why do you want to be someone's friend? Is it because you want to seem cool by association? In which case, that's kind of a weird thing. And that's We've all been there. Been we there. have been there. Yes. But if, it, like, if it's because you genuinely like them, then... And like them for them, not like what... But it has to be a give and take relationship, is what I'm yes. saying. Yeah, you have to give something to... To... And we have bits in our, like, how to date ones, which talk about, like, making conversation and also, like, a lot of ones specifically people with Asperger's or autism, which are worth looking into about how to share interests and stuff. And the ones that apply to dating also apply to interpersonal relationships in terms of how to just be charming and funny and interesting. Totally subjectively, obviously, because we're just two people, not the, like, of course, fucking of board course. of interesting examiners, but that would be a fun job. But, yeah. Yeah, no, this is, this is low bar as well. I mean, yeah, when it comes to interesting, I mean actual adventures and such. This is just a conversation. But whatever. Anyway, sorry, I'm projecting now. But some of the most people, interesting people I find have, are people that haven't, say, left London ever, and yet they're just still good at conversation and have yeah. good thoughts about things. Like. Yeah. Or, but to be fair, then I was thinking, I'm probably really boring to people that are, like, really highly intellectual, you know? Right. And they can't have that conversation with me. Of course, sure. That's a different type well, of... those people I find very boring and don't want to have that conversation with them. So it is, it is subjective. 100%. 100%. I think it's all about generosity at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, if you're expecting someone to give their time and energy and affection to you, then you need to offer the same to them. Yeah, and we'll say, yeah, I've definitely been in the situations where... Yeah, yeah, you're the one kind of making effort, but again, and... Or it's even, it goes down even the worst path, where it was just like, oh, but... Oh, no, I'm going to sound like a dick now. But, you know, someone's like, go, go, I suppose, problems in their life as such, and so you end up... You mean this, this show that we're no, doing? No. <laughs> no. no, to be fair, again, a lot of the time actually does... No, I mean, emotional labour is a real thing. Yeah. And you should, like, the reason why we do this show is because we recognise that it has been put on a lot of women's, in particular, shoulders to do the emotional labour of dealing with someone's problems and then when they're done with their problems, they ghost you and don't ever, like, actually try to be there in a relationship and you end up feeling used. And that is a massive thing and we totally get why a lot of women in particular are totally exhausted by this and we do this show because we have the emotional labour but we also do it sporadically because we don't always have the emotional labour yeah, and one of the times like there would be people that like lo you know reply guys that like all of my work and tra tra you know and sort of eventually they try and get into the pants as such mm. and like I politely say no and they're, they're, they're never heard from back like they um, mm. <laughs> it's like, but I really am nice oh uh, Oh god, now I sound like a dick. But I don't know. Yeah, I just, but like, you're not that person because we just want friendship. No, so. you're awesome. Like I'm massively projecting here. I'm just saying it's like it would be nice to feel that there are actual friendships out there. Yes. Yeah. Too many times <sighs> people we've, call thought, us we've cultivated yes. friendships with men, and then it's turned out it has the ulterior motive, and it, it's not just that it it's makes the friendship. It. 
even if they want to be friends and also maybe pursue a romantic thing, you unless they put a lot of care into convincing you otherwise, it ends up with feeling like the entire friendship was just an excuse to get to X, Y, and Z point of like pants off, which and even if they're like, no, I still want to be your friend. Even if they mean they that, they I mean, fuck off. half the time they don't, they fuck off. And that other half, it's on them to prove that they still want to be your friend. Which is fine, because again, that's something we talked about in the previous re- uh, episode, I think, as well. It's just like, no, just because someone has like admitted feelings towards you, that doesn't mean I'm, I change my opinion on them in any shape or form. Like, mm. of course, you're going to be maybe like, I, I don't think this will work. But that doesn't mean I want to end friendship. I want to be no. in your life because you're rad. And then yeah. you fuck off. And I'm like, okay, well, that was a waste of time. Or like, I lo- you know, I lost someone. Yeah. Anyways, pure projection here. Yeah, and that's also not like, about your issue. I am but... probably about three or four of these in, so. The party begins. Right, I'm just gonna check the gigabytes. I might have a pee, so let's do a break. Yeah, that break. Okay. All right, back to it. We have a few quick ones that are not really long ones coming up. Coming up. So, first, hello, ladies. In your last video. <laughs> I just already made eyes. I'm sorry. <laughs> In your last video, you cringed at a friend who put greater cunnilingus in his I Tinder profile. I wonder if this is their <laughs> For, Forgive my ignorance, but why did you think this made him seem inexperienced? Okay, nobody says cunnilingus. Yeah, mate. Like, I don't know. Have you ever really gone like, I really feel like I need to do cunnilingus at you now. <laughs> At you? No, I don't know. I don't even know. Like, to like, you? Like, like, I don't even know. Like, literally, to me, it's just like, that's not how no. people talk. No, that's not how people talk. That is not a hot speak. Um, it's like super medical, and also to brag about being able to go down on someone. Like, to me, a default yeah. is. Okay, going down on someone, I'd be like, fine. Already. No, I would even not. I'm like, I fucking expect someone to go down on me as a fucking baseline, correct. not as correct. a, like, special trick. That's true. That's true. No, that's Like, if you're correct. so proud of yourself being able to give a woman head, like, this woman, then I, I don't really know what to say for yourself, but like get other hobbies. Like. Yeah, for real. So that should be basic. No, that's a really good point. Yeah. As in, as in, but that's actually, to be fair, no, you just called me out in a really lovely po- way. As in like, I was just like, oh fuck, but that's amazing when someone can do that. As in like, that's how low our fucking bar mm. is. It's yeah. like, shit, that's amazing if, if someone can do that out here. My days. Yeah. That's I mean, sad. unfortunately it is. But it shouldn't be. But it shouldn't be. And couldn't make us, I'm sorry, but it's just like, it's just like, it's that's, never n- that's just, not, no, that's not. But good. also don't be super crude. Like, if you want to express how good you are giving head, giving head is an acceptable phrase. Eating you out, unacceptable phrase. Unacceptable phrase. Unacceptable going phrase. Going down on you, acceptable going, yeah, phrase. Going down on you is like, in my, my, in my opinion, my favorite way of framing it. Going down, yeah, yeah, same. Mm. And you're what eating else? you out, gross. My partner once said that and I was like, yeah, no, never say that again. And yeah. he, ne- he never said that again. Which is good. Yeah, so I don't know, just... I would be surprised to find anyone that would find cunnilingus as like a turn on. That's all I'm saying. That's all. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not a turn on. Whereas like going oh, no, on. No, yeah. It is. But also it's like it's just a weird thing to brag about. Like I mean, would I put I'm really good at giving head? I, I I'm actually saying giving head. I wouldn't say I'm really good at fellatio. No. Yeah. Like, right? <laughs> That's it. That is the that is the uh, parallel. Yeah. Absolutely. No. No. And also, like, every person likes different things. I'm sorry. And also, yeah. even through their life, they like different things. The way that I like being went down on yeah. is different now than it, how it was and five also, years ago. also, like, I would feel weird. If I swiped right on someone who said, like, they're really good at cunnilingus, I would then <laughs> be like... Of course I wouldn't. <laughs> no, first of all, I wouldn't. Even if I did, I'd be like, are they going to now just, like, do it to prove it? Um, is there going to be a weird situation where I have to then, like, they're going to do it and I have to feel like, yes, you were very good at that. Well done. Or, like, it's some kind of weird situation. Okay, Terrible Sex in the City, uh, uh, I guess, reference or whatever, but there was this whole episode where Charlotte was dating Mr. Pussy, they call him. So one guy... Mr. Pussy. There's this one, you know, city... Well, I guess Wall Street guy that was renowned across the sort of, like, upper-class New York scene as someone that does give incredible head. And, like, okay. they were literally talking in the toilet and someone overheard them. They were like, yeah, I have this guy. He is amazing. Fucking enjoy it. And Charlotte was like, hey, but, you know, I mean... I just don't want to. I don't. I don't want to be in a relationship with someone that is just like good at that. And then Samantha and and and, and Kara were like, "Look, if he's good at that, like, that's pretty much all you need." Like, as in, like, amen. Yeah. And they were all both like, "Amen." And to be fair, yes, if someone can just do that, that's like. I mean, it's true. As someone who's dated people who haven't had penises, like the most important thing for me is someone going down on me. Like, if you can do penetrative stuff too, sick. But 
if you mean, can't make me come because I didn't come for a pinch of sex, then it's kind of kind of a deal breaker. Yeah, and also like, but again, I'm fascinated that even now we're sort of talking about you know liber- in a liberatory manner or whatever. But to be fair, like, and I think we've addressed this in the past as well. Like, I'm still having to very much convince myself that someone enjoys it. Though I I, yes. I enjoy well, it depends on the on the on the situation they have done that maybe but like I enjoy going down people um and but like I still don't accept that people would like that on me and that's a dumb like socialization well it's not though because also I have been in situations where like someone will be really into it at the beginning and then it will just fade out and I'm like oh yeah well are you just posturing as someone who's into that because then you get the feminist points or what or what's the situation here now and it's and then because of all like the gendered crazy shit like I don't want to ask because I don't because then that makes me feel like it definitely is that I'm like it's actually not appealing and they were just doing it to like be cool and it it does like there's this whole fucking stigma around it and that like people with like Libya have to like deal with and it's a thing and so and yet, although that might make it sound like we want people to say, I'm really good at cunnilingus, what it makes it sound like is they think that that's it. Or, I, I don't know, it's just weird and cringe and... And yeah, and they explicit. are actually good at it. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but rarely they are. And also, I mean, I don't know, but there's so many resources these days. I feel, yeah, as of late, I'll say, even the mainstream form has, has been giving it more attention, which is yes, great. And there are some ama- yeah, there are some really good. Yeah. Um, There's no excuse for lessons not out that such doing it. There's excuses for not being good at it if you're inexperienced or whatever. Okay, but what if but you're not into it? Because again, like Charlotte, again, same character was like, I just don't like going down on people. Like it gives me yeah, it gives me less. I don't like doing it, and that's okay too. That is okay too, but then that's something you need to bring up. As in, it's a not a you thing. It's a, I just don't like doing a thing, and then it's up to the but partner you can't you're with. No, it's up to the partner to you're with to decide whether or not they are okay having a sexual relationship, which doesn't include that thing. Yeah. Like, if, if you said to me, Ron, I want to ravish your body, but I don't want to go down on you, I would seriously consider, actually, it's a deal breaker for me, and although I love you very much, Mariam, we'll have to part ways. And so it's fine to not want to do something, but it's not... Yeah, and it's not fine to coerce someone to doing something they don't want to do, but it's just weird to say... No, kind of language at the straight up, no... Yeah, and, and, and also honestly, there's so many people on Tinder, particularly dudes, who will like talk the talk about, oh yeah, I'm gonna like push you into the wall, I'm gonna do this to you, I'm gonna do that to you, and then you're like, wow, missionary, how exciting! Yeah, so like, they don't know anything. I have nothing wrong with missionary, but like, don't hype something up because you're probably gonna make it disappointing. Yeah, and also dudes have also very much told me as well. But I'm sorry, being again very eccentric. Sorry, these are our limitations. Is what it is. I try to uh, yeah, catch hoping. myself when I can, but I do definitely form into systems. Well, but not just that. Like I mean. We are never going to be able to represent people with different experiences, no, no. and we don't pretend to. So we'd like to think that, you know, we acknowledge our limitations. They are there. We live with those in those boundaries, and uh, we, well, we really hope that there will be people that are creating this sort of content from other perspectives. Mm-hmm. This yeah. is why, you know, and this is why we don't necessarily invite guests, because we don't want to have, like, oh, okay, you're the one trans person that will give us all of the mm. insight as to how it is in that way. Because even us two white cis girls have, have very yeah. different <laughs> points of view on a lot of these things. So yeah. so everyone's different, and we hope AAA could be, like, a fucking empire of, of, of people mm-hmm. of people doing, um, yeah, different, yeah, no, having different perspectives as such. Um, I lost my point. Um, dudes. Dudes. Ah. Just, yeah, don't overhype yourself. Don't use weirdly, like, forensic language. And don't jump into... Oh, I don't know, man. It's just... It's just or a they will, like, I don't know, like... <laughs> they will do it for, like, 20 seconds to acknowledge that they can do it or they mm. want to do it, but, like, actually, it's kind of useless. Yeah, I wonder. Like, and I'm sure we're similar with us, whatever. But also, it's like an ego thing as well for me because, like, I take quite a long time, and I'm always insecure about that. And so, if someone's like, "I'm really good at conlingus," and I still take my standard like twenty, twenty five minutes, then I'm like, "Am I hurting their feelings? Am I? Yeah. Am I the anomaly? Am I ruining their fucking like track record?" It just creates a weird fucking like, oh, standard and hierarchy and system, yeah. and it's just weird. Yeah. No. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, just put, putting it t- onto Tinder is just... Oh, oh, what I was going to say is that I will say that I really appreciate you even acknowledging a woman's pleasure 
on your bio on being like here yeah, you know like i am interested in pleasuring you which is a really great sign and so mm. i think that that's really great and um but the way you frame it, it sounds like you want a cookie for that but man like again but we should be striving for better yes 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 we are basically yeah I, I, we're better than we're in a better position than where we were five years ago it, we're still very much not that no yeah, majority of people still think that, like, you do that and mm. it's five times and she's gonna come <gasps> and squirt all over you. Right, okay, we should, sorry, but this is, yeah. we're gonna move on because it's just a yeah. lot of questions and I think other than that, uh, that's pretty much it. not much to Okay, uh, next one is... I think this might have to be my last one. That one, the little okay. one. Okay. How... It's quite a short okay, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you feel about it? dating apps? I personally find them difficult to use because people feel like commodities and there's just something that doesn't feel right for a lack of a better explanation. I find it strange to swipe on someone from just a picture and maybe a few sentences. We have done so many videos about dating apps. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Like, this just this is so sweet that you asked us. Probably you just watched our like one of our little videos and so this is what you're asking. But um, we do go quite in depth about these conversations in our other mm -hmm. segments and um again because we do have so many fascinating questions that are a bit different apologies but we will go slightly yeah n not here basically we're fine with dating apps it depends how you present yourself it depends what you want at different times i have times when i'm really into them i have times like now where i'm not really into them whatever yeah and, and the last one is just like uh are you feeling weird about it like do watch our our episode what well, not episode but video where we talk about is it okay to touch yourself to someone else's picture because I think we sort of detangle a lot of like what it means to just put your image out there and and, and what 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 mm -hmm. are the problems with consent on that and and yeah I mean this is a very sincere and lovely question however I wouldn't worry about yeah. stuff too much but um also there's in that in that video there's some people that disagree with us and have also some quite interesting and long takes so it's worth actually reading the whole discussion there because it's really cool to be fair this is the really good point to to thank all of you amazing people yes. that are creating really incredible comments underneath our videos yeah if we don't like explicitly respond to one of your statements it's not because we haven't taken it seriously it's because it's just a really great statement you want yeah. to leave it up as its own thing 100% like if we d disagree massively we usually comment but if we don't that means like yeah yes that's like great we're really thankful for people that. that write like paragraph long thoughtful things about our content and those who disagree with us respect respectfully is yeah. super cool our viewers are fucking incredible yeah. in general like come to think of it like we started this one in january we're 10 months later mm. the fact that oh, i'm just gonna sound weird i don't know the fact that we haven't necessarily taken a, st a step like wrong that much that's really impressive no, that's we've had a few things people disagree with but that's fine but like that's what has to be expected no deal breakers per se no not that we've had yeah yeah okay go on to the next Sorry. one then just um yeah. yeah yeah but that's again I no but it's got it's got a few slightly okay. different bits okay okay hi triple a i finally gotten to the point in my life where people actually want to date me and i have what like 18 <laughs> Uh, and I have maybe not for some people. Come on. Well, uh, actually, we were called out like, "Oh, you're not anarchist, right? Because you believe in like the age of consent, or like eighteen as being yes. like a thing." I mean, sixteen is the age of consent. Whatever. I'm just like, you know what? I don't want to risk that shit. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, eighteen. Yes. The age of consent is different in different countries as well. Yeah. If you're from America, trying to call yourself for being pedos, try harder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I have the energy and self-esteem to go for it. Been getting a few matches and go on a few dates, but after the first date, I've not been feeling super compelled to see anyone again. I haven't hooked up with any of the dates, and I feel like I'm some type of demisexual. We'll get to that. And it's like, these people, if any of them were to hit me up again and ask me out, I'd totally go out with them, but I don't feel compelled to initiate it. I'm not sure if that's because I just, I'm not so interested in them so that sacrificing time I could be seeing other friends or taking time for myself or if I am somehow having this need to feel wanted that I'm not a nuisance hence me waiting to hear from them again rather than asking them out again is this weird by the way my pronouns are they them thank you yeah thank appreciate you. that by the way because we never want to deliberately misgender someone 100% so and always do that if you feel um obliged to yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also because we have usually we are kind of uh working from the point of our generic general audience being cis dudes being cis dudes so uh, and apologies if we again are cis normative in that so it really helps us when someone does do this because we would never deliberately mistake someone thank you so two things to address in this one thing um the being bored thing the other thing the demisexual thing <laughs> 
I don't know. I feel like this is where I'm going to lose my, like, woke points. I don't feel like demisexuality is a thing. Same. I think some people take longer to form attachments with other people. I think also it depends on where you are in your life, how quickly you form attachments with people. If you want, if you feel, like, comforted by by seeming yourself as divergent from a normality that is instant connection by taking that label, fine. But I would say there is no normality that is instant connection. I think sometimes you'll make instant connections, sometimes they don't. I do not make instant connections. I think you just haven't found people that you find hot. I mean, I, I, I mean demisexuality is the, the idea that you need to get to know someone before you find them attractive, right? I thought it's just like you are attracted by people's intellect. intellect no, rather. that's sepiosexual. Oh, shit! Yeah. Fuck that one up! Apologies! Yeah, yeah. I just know it's because of my comedy skit we did about no, this. Sorry, where sorry, sorry, mocks sorry, demisexuals and sepiosexuals. Apologies, no, 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 fuck that no, one No, demisexuality is the idea that you only form sexual attraction once you've got to know someone. Gotcha. And there's like... A lot of queer people have decided, oh, like people under the umbrella have decided that this is a label. I I feel weird about this, not because I'm invalidating people that choose to use that label, but because I have at times felt that I I do take a long time to do like someone before I really like want to fuck them at times, and I've also not at times, and I feel like seeing it as a sexuality to me is just confusing. I just I don't... just can't relate. I fully can't relate. To me, it's like yeah, you very form much it body much meat. more instantaneously than I do. Yeah. So this is so I I don't and a lot again that this hits the limitation of us as such where I just can't. But like, look, if you want to use the label of demisexuality, that's fine. Whatever. Like, I'm not gonna like tell you that you can't. I would say that don't pigeonhole yourself into something that may just be the fact that you haven't found someone that really makes you wet your pants yet. Like. Yeah. No. But that's I. That, okay. Again, as always, we have to go very meta on this. This is someone who has taken the time to write this question in, meaning yeah. this is something they really think about. Like, and this is something that's really bothering them and they're thinking, is it me? What is yeah. going on? I have made the effort. Okay, basically, I can date now. I'm like, I'm someone that is in the dating scene. I'm doing it, I'm trying, I'm going on dates, and yet I'm not clicking with anyone. Or, um, yeah, I just don't feel like it. And yet they're attractive, they're hot, they're beautiful, and I cannot put myself out there. So now, I think... I wonder if there is some sort of, I mean, again, this is so difficult because like if I'm going to say, oh, what if if there is some sort of guilt in you where you feel like you can only really like create sexual, you know, relationships with someone that you feel like you have a strong attachment with, which I think is this like Puritan uh, mindset that has been imposed on a lot of Western centric people. Uh, which I would like to think we need to challenge. However, that is me denying your sexual preferences, probably. So this is this is this is a, a, a difficult right. conversation. Right, and you also have like asexual people that don't feel sexual at all. Like, so I mean, the label I feel like is irrelevant. The idea that there's people you find attractive and sexy and whatever, but you're not interested, you can't be bothered. I've been there. Yeah. Sometimes I'm just oh, fucking lazy God. as yeah. well. Like sometimes I'm not interested in them, and that's you can tell. If, like, but if you're sometimes you're just like. Yeah, I would, but actually it's winter and it's cold and I don't really want to leave the house. Yeah. And Or there's some beautiful, gorgeous people that are really photogenic and everything and then you can hang out with them for ages and it's just, there's not that... Yeah, there's not that connection. There's like... not that spark. And you question yourself for the rest of your life. That was a mistake. They would have taken me out of my rut and shit. But, yeah. like, but also, we've had a lot of conversations about the difference between like mine and Marianne's like, sexuality, in a sense, in where... like. I often start dating people thinking, like, yeah, they're kind of nice, and I grow into, like, a very loving, affectionate bond with them, whereas I feel like you you kind of have to start from the, like, they're really fucking amazing. Not amazing, point. they're really but, like, fucking hot. Yeah, but, like, <laughs> and then I can find them interesting. I maybe. think you start at a higher level than I do. And so I, I generally build my, like, affection and trust and desire for someone throughout being with them. Oh, and I just being left. I, I get left disappointed. <laughs> no, but like there are different approaches to things and if you feel like they're worth taking the time and also if it's not inconvenient, honestly, like most relationships I've had have just been not that inconvenient. If any of the people I dated told they have been me inconvenient they haven't. Oh, okay. If any of the people I dated when we first started dating had le- lived more than an hour and a half away from me, I don't fucking care how hot they are. I probably wouldn't have bothered. Different for you. A bit more than an hour and a um, half. I'm um, um, Working. <laughs> yeah. That's next question. <laughs> so, again, like, I don't think there's, like, a standard or, like, a criteria. It's something yeah. like you're trying to fit a certain criteria of, like, 
if you can't be asked to go and see someone, then you can't be asked to go see someone. Also, it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't sound like they amuse you. It doesn't sound like you leave the day being like, I've had, like, you know, an entertaining time. Yeah. Maybe you're just meeting people that are just kind of maybe bringing you down in one way or another, or just not feeling you uplifted, or there's not the same cat, or, I don't know, I'm definitely now putting, like, the... The, the, the stress on your partners which I probably shouldn't be no, doing it's like that. if they were to hit me up and ask me out I'd go out with them but I don't feel compelled to initiate it that's kind of a good sign yeah that I went I had this whole phase I've talked about in many of our videos but I went on a string of tinder dates in a kind of experiment over one January and I had nice chats I had good convos and a few times people were like yeah let's meet again let's meet again it fizzled out and I didn't wake up the next month being like gosh darn it I wish I'd followed that up mm. I woke up the next month being like oh if you really want to see someone again, you'll make time to do oh it. Oh my god, I was literally going to say that, and this is going to sound so whack, but like, when you know, you know. Yeah, and it doesn't mean you have to be in love or crazy about no. it, but... No! Just aroused! Yeah. Like, my... But not even that! Like, my last girlfriend, like, in Madrid, we went, we went on Tinder. It's my, my one Tinder relationship. And we went on one date, and we just clicked, and we hung out for, like, several hours. We went on another date, we just clicked. We hung out for several hours, and then it turned out we ended up dating long distance for five months, and... I guess because we you, just got on. Yeah. And I wasn't like, so like, oh my God, I just want to be in your pants. I was like, I just really enjoy hanging out with you and I want to do it again. And also it's convenient because we both live in the same fucking city. Like. Okay, okay. So to kind of create a, a parallel, and I'm again being really way too raw and personal here is something that I'm more than happy to talk about sex here. I am not happy to talk about the professional stuff here. And I'm going to do this now. And that's way too, to me, it was way more raw. I can talk about my labia all day long, but I cannot talk about the fact that, for instance, so, for the longest time, I definitely thought, you know, with all my portfolio, for all, everything that I've done, you know, like, all my fucking awards, you know, like, as soon as I was gonna, like, just look for a job, it's just gonna come. It's just gonna, like, it's just gonna be that. So, so that's why I didn't do it for ages, because, of course, it's just gonna be that. And, yeah, to put it in my cards on the table, and this is really bad. If a lot of you are, like, my games industry looking, like watching pals this is really and I was saying again I put a lot of the blame on me being like a union organizer and or just in generally being critical of the industry so again people google me and I've seen them looking on my like literally someone will google me from the company and I know where they are based literally will be like their area in some city in Europe and they look at the fact that I wrote about labor rights in esports or something and then a couple of months later I get a no or something so I know there's that part of it but again basically I have been rejected as of late and I've put myself out there now and like to being to, to feel like so rejected is fucking terrible and so and it's only because I put myself out there that for um, for a longest time I didn't right so it sounds a little bit again so to use that power is that like I think the reason why you're feeling right this now is because like for now you're like you know what I am now ready to be in the dating scene and yeah it's kind of not necessarily working out so what's going on and yeah. and it is very much like a what's going on sort of question you haven't found the job you really get you really want yeah you really want it and like and then the most the thing is that for ages we think like as soon as we're gonna try and start looking it's gonna get it but we're not gonna start because of course we're gonna get it so it's just like mm. and then you do and it's difficult and then you begin question begin question everything i'm i'm questioning about how i should like delete 80% of my social, I know, like, my, my Google history altogether because I'm complicated and, and, or, fuck me, like, having this sort of show also doesn't help. Um, yeah, I went to a conference, an academic conference, a royal academic conference a few months ago, and a guy was like, a professor said to me, oh, yeah, I've seen your sex show, it's all over Twitter. So that's the thing we have to bear in mind in our own world. That, I mean, that's a bit of a segue, but yeah, your, your, ba your basic analogy is, is a good yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, as in, like, for, for so long, you think you're going to just get it immediately yeah. as soon as you're going to start looking. You're ready to date, you'll find the perfect person. Exactly. But... And, like, and then it becomes complicated, and yeah. it's still complicated. But Hence, also, I'm going to launch Patreon soon, so look out for that. Look out for that. 10% is going to go for yeah. AAA. Fucking watch your space. Um, but, no, 10% shouldn't go to AAA. It's all you. Yeah. No. No. no, we had this conversation. Not about ten percent. Oh, do you want more? <laughs> no, 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 no. That that is not even that is not even a conversation we're having. No, we we had this conversation. I feel like was it when like, we were really drunk in your bedroom? In the garage. Were we no, really I drunk? I think it was the morning. Was Maybe I really drunk? drunk? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, but the point is, you either when you're in the situation <laughs> or, that you're in, where you're ready to go, you're they are empty. That's Oh, they're not empty. That's my the new one. I've got some apologies. Okay. I've got some. Is it okay if I do yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. the only thing? Um, where you you're like, yeah, I'm ready to get back to the scene, and it turns out that the first 
three jobs, it's a very weird analogy. If I had three jobs you applied for, I'm like, fine, but you could do better. Well, you yeah, could at do least better. Like, I got legit rejected. And I got into like third stage interviews and shit. Right. So the difference in the oh, analogy I'm that so you got rejected it. was you are not that interested. Like you might get the job, but maybe you want something. And like, yeah, I've got a few offers, but they were shit. Right, so. Yeah. Yeah. As in, like, very... Yeah, anyways. I'm not interested in them in sacrificing time to see them that I could be seeing other friends taking care of myself. That is the most fundamental thing. Like, you know when you're excited to see someone and you'd rather do that than, like, watch Netflix in your pants. And I wouldn't like to do that for many people. What's wrong with watching Netflix no, in your pants? No, I just said I wouldn't oh, do that for many apologies. people. Gotcha, gotcha. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even some of my best beloved friends, when they're gotcha. like, hey, come to South London, I'm like, are you fucking crazy? <laughs> I'd rather watch Netflix in my pants. <laughs> so, yeah, like, I think you can tell when you want to put the effort in. And whether or not you're demisexual, like, that's up to you to decide. I think it's, like, to the, like, chagrin of some of our viewers, possibly, I think demisexual is an unhelpful label because a lot of people experience demisexuality at different times in their dating life, and I I think it's more of a preference than a dating, than a sexuality. Feel free to complain about that and cancel me in the comments, but I think it's a label that can restrict you because... I've been both. You can be both. I don't know. Yeah. Because also, if you think that you can only form a romantic relationship if you've been friends with someone for a long time, that also means that you end up forming friendships in a slightly um, duplicitous manner. Mm, ah, good boy. Where you might good be forming boy. friendships in a hope that they become sexy friendships, which is like the opposite of what we talked about earlier in the video. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, so... Good point. Something to bear in mind. I don't know. Yeah, I feel definitely. like all the demis are going to come at me, but... You know what, if you want to come at me, watch my previous comedy skit where I rip the shit into you. Um, again, we'll be in the, sh we'll be in the no, sh show notes. Okay, oh, long distance relationships, Mariam, do you no, want to do that No, but I, first of all, it, 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 I don't think it really reflects on my situation. Oh, I didn't actually so read it. I read it many just... times. And <laughs> no, I no, I really think it's very different. Just because it says long distance, it's... it's yeah, a... you can zoom in. Yeah, yeah to put... Uh, I do that. I'm in a very different position where I was from when we started AAA. This is very, it's all very awkward. Yeah, I feel like you need to give them like a TLDR. I think that I, I can only do that once. TBC? Yeah, once I get a certain consent from SO as such. Uh, but uh, to be fair, I think they said it's fine. I mean, if you start dating someone that's doing a sexually explicit show, you're kind of have to accept yeah and a certain uh, level of and to be fair that's been one of the m main reasons why i trust them so much and why it's been such an incredible experience because they have watched all the shows and all like, of them yeah oh, wow thanks uh and they are still into me whereas i think a lot of other people would be like you know kind of a bit distancing themselves from it i mean Anyways. i know you have this fear i don't have this fear i think it makes us seem incredibly cool like sexually free like sex and city type folk but uh except yeah, that but, when no, it gets brought up at the, conferences no, but precisely as in like yeah it's all very sexy for like a hookup it's all very sexy for like you know for like a month or so you know i oh i dated a triple a you know or whatever i, I fucking uh, agony on but when it means to like you know when it comes to meaningful relationships yeah, sure. and like introducing them to their you to their family and shit like that's, that's yeah really my partner thought it was a really good idea before I went to visit his mum to mention to his mum that I did a sex show he was proud of you yeah but I feel like the meet the parents vibe shouldn't be conditioned with like so she was in a bikini in the back garden talking about blowjobs no, but if they love you in that then they'll love you in any shape where <laughs> Right, you can't have me at my best if you can't take me at my exactly, AAA. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I think I think that was I think that was a a, a, a way of, of, of that was a a, a sign of admiration. I am sure it was, but it was also a sign of oh my fucking god, this is going to be an awkward encounter. Yeah, no, no. And, <laughs> but again, I I think it's a point of pride as such. But anyway, yeah, so, so certainly, um, I'm glad he's proud of me doing this. I am. If you're watching, of course he is. Uh, I love you. <laughs> By the way, I found the Uber money. Uh, hello, <laughs> I am currently in a long distance entanglement of some kind. I don't even know if you'd call it a relationship. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, ours is, so. Anyway, when it's good, it's, it's not really... competition, Maria. No, 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 it's very new and raw. I'm, like, excited but not sure, and it's all... 
Um, it's really nurturing and good and the best thing in my life. But the other person has a lot to deal with, particularly mental health issues wise. And sometimes they just got very uncommunicative for literally weeks at a time. I never want to be too demanding of someone who is finding it hard to call, but this is also very difficult for me. And I guess my question is kind of about how you can set guidelines or communicate needs to someone who might just not reply at all. Since it's the nature of the thing that most of our communication is in real time, back and forth stuff. Also, I'm aware that in some ways, I'd be much, it'd be much easier for me to form relationships with people closer to me. Mm. If it, I wasn't so devoted, pinning after some, uh, someone who lives... Pining. A, pining, yeah. Is that a word? Pining, yeah. Pi- to pine is like to, to long for. Apologies. Oh, I should... That's a good word. You should use it in it your just, it's like, diary. <laughs> it's like pine wood. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, la, 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 la. Pining after someone. Pining after someone who lives a considerable distance away from me. But it's not like you break off a long distance connection and automatically form new ones. I'm very aware that particularly in my case, it's more likely to be just break off a long distance connection and just become more isolated and alone than I was before. And I'm aware that I'm stressing the negatives a lot here because that's the stuff that I need advice with. But to get an accurate picture of this situation, I should say again that when things are good, they make me happier than I've ever been in years. Like probably as happy as I've ever been. Uh, I guess this phrasing probably make it clear that I have my own issues going on. But whatever, I'm not writing my memoirs yet. Oh. Mm. There's a few different things to unpack there. So many things to unpack there. The first thing I want to pick up on is the fact that you keep talking about how you might be dating other people. Well, of course. But it's... The, the thing that, that is, is striking to me about that is that you say... But they can't. No, but that's their issue. It's like, they think that they, they won't. As in, they can't. Like, basically, they're like, I'm stuck. I, I'm either dissatisfied in this relationship or I'm probably not going to find anyone. But they say... Else. It would be easier for me to form relationships with people closer to me if I wasn't so devoted, pining after someone who lives, blah, blah, blah. But it's not like you break off a... Like, I feel like they're in two minds, basically. They're in two minds whether to break this off or to stay with them, right? We can agree. Yeah. Yeah. But the breaking off with them is not because they've found someone else they like. It's because they... If they can't... They can't imagine finding someone else they like while they're with this person. And they imagine it's only a possibility to find someone else they like if they were to break up with that person. The thing I want to say is, if you find someone else you fucking fancy and want to shag, yeah. that will happen whether or not you're with that person. Yeah. And so that's what I mean. It's like, you don't need to... It, that, in that particular point, it doesn't need to be an either or. It's not like, I will break up with them so that I can sow my seeds elsewhere. If the sowing seed times come, you're going to be ready. So I want to find out just how far away you are from each other by choice as such, right? So, as in... The way that I have, and I'm, I'm finding the whole long distance thing very difficult. I'm, I'm, I think way more difficult, I think, than perhaps the SO does. Is this your first LDR? Um, blah, blah, blah. I didn't see it as LDR previously, but it clearly was, and it crashed, and it burned, and it was terrible. Right, but that was a relationship that started off in one place, yes, and then and LDR. Then Same away. as with me. Yes, yes, and... um. Well, this is LDR from the start. But you know what? I don't I just... Okay, this is... Again, Mariam is a new relationship. If we haven't already hinted at that enough. It, yes. <laughs> um, yes. I am very happy when I'm with them. I find very... Dif- I find the distance difficult. Definitely. Mm-hmm. But the thing that we do is that we try and plan, like... You know, we book meetups, like, way in advance. So we have, like, four book now. Um... That's it. We're meeting. So there's always something so to count down to. That's a good point for them. There's always something to count down to. That's it. And I think that, to be fair, that was a very conscious effort from the both of us. And to be fair, I think from them more than... Because they recognize that I have this issue that is difficult for me. So they're like, okay, well, we're going to make sure we do see each other often. And so they were very proactive and like, you know, booking the next dates. As in listening to me, that that's an issue for me. And because it was. So I think if I would really hope that your significant other could do that yeah, do you, as well. How, and do they often see each other? It doesn't no, doesn't. not even the distance. Because again, I imagine, you know, what if you know we're here and there in the States or something like that? That's expensive. And to be fair, I can't even afford this, this relationship. But also, like, um, in a lot of my relationship groups, most of them are in longest relationships from state to state. 
And a lot of them, like, because you know what it's like in America, though? Like, people also like, oh, it's only like a 15 hour drive cash. And they just drive like crazy in America. Like, it's a whole thing. They just drive everywhere on like massive things. So, yeah, it would be useful to know how often you see each other. Because I think that's a huge. And are you seeing each other as often as makes you happy? Are you seeing each other as often as makes your partner happy? Like, Basically, like, I have really expressed the fact that I don't like this and I need to see each other. And they made an active effort to, like, make sure that happens. If they didn't, if they were just like, no, this thing is wrong. Mm. Still, they'll be like, oh, I'm okay. This yeah. is not working. For are me you a priority all. for each other? Yeah, are they making an effort to make you feel like there is continuity there? You know, that you will be together in those points yeah. that you are saying that are so precious. Because I will say, when like you talk a lot about the like ghosting and not communications, I was in longest relationship with my partner for the better part of two years of our three year relationship, my ex partner. And I was not a massive text, I didn't text every day, they didn't text every day. We Skyped about once a week. It was not, like, the intensity of communication is kind of normalised, I would say, now more so than it was then. I was, I'm talking, like, three years ago, not, like, in the 1980s when we were writing letters. Like, we just didn't need to because we were secure in each other. And also, it was different because we'd lived together for a year before that. But we made time to Skype about once a week. And aside from that, we didn't communicate every day. And I wouldn't have liked it if we did because I've been in toxic relationship situations where there's been a kind of... A vulnerability and a sense of my self-worth being hinged on how often they reply to me. That's happened in two of my more recent long-distance relationship type things. And it felt stressful, always checking my phone, always seeing if they were replying. Why aren't they replying? Why aren't I replying? What are they doing? What am I I doing? I love that shit. (laughs) It's nice when it's cute and fun. It's not nice when you're doing it because it comes from a place of feeling insecure. Gotcha. And in both this, and I know this for myself, when I'm secure in a relationship, I don't need to talk every day. When I am secure, when I aren't secure, when I aren't not secure in a relationship I I think about what they're doing all the time and not because I think they're like having crazy sex parties but because why is what they're doing less important than talking to me and so like you say it sounds like you have a difference either they, they're not into you sorry or you have a difference in standard about what yeah, communication looks like different expectations of intimacy precisely and I think those really need to realign like yeah. they need to align when you're like the relationships are difficult as is if relationships are difficult when you live in the same room in mm-hmm. the same flat in the same house in the same neighbourhood in the same city in the same country if you live in different countries like again these are all different like mm. you, you always have to negotiate boundaries and or ways to make each other feel secure i mean again like lana del rey you know wrote that whole video game song or whatever they are in the same flat you know and and she, yet yeah but but you know video well, well to be fair video game fuck you for like blaming that you, but anyway yeah, he was an unattentive partner he was not in, yeah and the, the, the intimacy wasn't established there right so um again so really i think it's up to your partner to really listen to your needs yeah. in that sense because we had a question i can't remember the last episode or the one before but about someone who was worried because they're the person they were dating or talking to by text they were sending emojis but then they would say they're beautiful and then they would say they weren't and it just seemed like there was a miscommunication in how they each other expected oh they were fishing for message. compliments but how would i been there we've all been there but the point was there was just a difference in communication styles and what they wanted from direct messaging or instant messaging. And if this is something that isn't established with you two, but this have is, a conversation oh about it. Oh my god, it. emotional intelligence, man. This is all like this is what you need, and I, this is what is what I recognize in this person. This is why I'm able to do this. It was wild. It's just like I'm I'm a madam, and I I I really don't need the long distance relationship right now. It's like fucking hell. I, I don't like it. I fucking hate it. I hate it. But it's because that person is so committed to like making it comfortable for me. Thus far, it's working. But mm. like as soon as they're gonna show any sort of well, you know, but you know, like as soon as, <laughs> but you know, as soon as it's it's there's gonna be not that attentiveness for 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 each other's needs, it's going to collapse. So, again, you just have to really put in that effort. Yeah. And if you're not doing that, this is not, it's not real. But it's not because of just the distance. It's like, just like you don't, you're not on the same level of, like, trying to please each other. Um, and again, okay, so what's really fascinating here is that they're, like, again, being like, hey, but this person out there, they have mental health issues. Again, you could be sitting, living in the same flat yeah. and someone could be having mental health issues and you're going to be, like, overcompensating. And it's... Bullshit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I get not I've to say that we don't always... With ha- mental health issues... I mean, we've all, we all have... Yeah, I, I have mental health issues, but... Care. I have anxiety, hugely, yeah, so I have people should also have to, like, care for us, of course. <laughs> like, of course. But, like, again, it's all about just, like, the give and take, the give and take. Then you will reward them in other ways, you know? So... Yeah. If they're using their mental health issues and they excuse to be an asshole to you, then that's not acceptable. That's it. That's but 
if they're using that to explain something that's genuine, like sometimes I don't respond to my friends for a week and it's because I have been mm. chain smoking in the garage and feeling like shit. Sometimes I just respond to my friends for a week because I can't ask. Oh, really <laughs> quick, really quick love message to lads. Lads, you know who you are. Yes. Incredibly supportive to us. And I fully, fully know that I fucked up in responding to you. And uh, this is, again, this is the sort of thing. It's just like, I fucked up. I didn't respond. I really messed this up. Yeah, I happens. am apologizing. I, it's, it happens. It was just like life got in the way and that. But, um, but it, yeah, I would like to think that I will be better. And But yeah, it sounds to me like you're second guessing a lot that should have been resolved through com- communication and conversation. And if you aren't having conversations, that's fine and you should have them. If you feel like you can't have red these flag, conversations... Red flag. Red flag. Bam, bam. Like, you say you're devoted to them. I feel like we need them. sound effects yeah. at some point. You say you're devoted to them. You say that when you're with them, it's like nothing else. Those things are all great. <laughs> like but, nothing else, but then there's nothing else with other people as well. Like, Yeah, it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to be in a longest relationship. And if they're fulfilling your needs, and needs don't just have to be physical intimacy, it helps. But they're also their your need by responding to. If you need a lot of communication and a lot of like self fulfillment through, through conversation with others, that's valid. It doesn't mean the other person will feel the same way. Okay, I'm gonna go also go on a complete limb out there, but as well, like if they understand that you're supporting them through a lot of, what they're going. Oh my god. Okay, now I nearly sounded quite bad. That as in like. Well, I was gonna say, really, was just like, oh, you know, but you're supporting them. Da-da. Perhaps you can have fun where you are. But that just sounds a bit like. I don't know, like, you're punishing them, but, like, obviously there has to be conversation around this. Like, you can't just be like, hey, well, I'm supporting you through a mental health issue. It just means I'm going to, like, fuck other people. Like, no. no, that's not how it should be. Again, it's... But also, in the longest relationship, poly is something to, to consider. It's but, sad. again, it comes down to trust of each other, which it sounds like you're yes. concerned about. Yeah, like, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You need to establish the solidity of your current relationship, and then you can think about other ways in which making exactly. it fulfilled when you're not exactly. with each other. And that stuff takes a while. It does take a while. We have a video on poly if that's what you're interested yeah, in. Yeah, like don't make, don't create polyamorous relationships out of uh, spite. D- yes, and to be fair, this is why I actually said it quite badly just then. As in, like, don't create polyamorous relationships out of a place of weakness. But at the same time, if you can have an honest conversation with your partner about, like, the needs you have and whether or not they can meet those needs, and yeah. if they can say, I cannot meet all of those needs, then that is a place where you can say, you can have the discussion about whether or not those needs can be met elsewhere, because there's nothing. Like, we, we are social animals. We are not designed to have one person meet all of our emotional, physical, intimate, communicative, hilarious needs. That's just not how And humans... what if they're, like, so far away as well? And also, yeah. But, like, if I spent all of my life with one person, I'd go fucking crazy. Like, it's... Yeah. It's okay to not have everything met by one person. You need to manage each other's expectations of each other and what you mean to each other and see actually how realistic that is in a long-distance context. I so feel for you, like, really. Yeah. I've, yeah, I've done it twice. You're doing it now. It's... Well, again, it, it's different it for, all the time. Because yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't necessarily think that it's like the, the LDR that is the issue here. It's more just like, it's an inability for you guys to have these conversations. This is yes. why you're fucking messaging us. And Yeah, maybe show them this video. Show them the question you ask. Because the question comes from a place of love. Yes. It's very empathetic. Yeah. It shows that you really care. You just want yeah. to do the right thing. But the, th- the fact that you mentioned several times in that question that you could be dating other people if it weren't for this LDR or that there could be potential for it. You are thinking about multiple things here and those multiple things need to be taken in hand. And I think we've addressed most of them. I'd, I'd say so. Would it be okay if you... If I were... Oh, um, do you want to do a break? Do you want to do a break? Um, no, no, no. I was just like, if you find the next question, yeah. and I'm just going to check the I found the next question. <laughs> I mean, it's literally a slide. This is running. This is running. I think everything's fine. Great. Okay. Next question. Okay. We're not going to get through all of them today. Apologies. No, we're definitely not. Okay. <laughs> hey, M and R. Oh, by I, the way, I don't think we even said our names. Mariam, Rowan. Hello. Rowan, Mariam. Lovely to meet you. Mm, I got a clove. Love it. Again, so I make some really, like, nice posh mulled wine a lot of the time. I actually even put the cloves into the oranges. And then I see if people, like, like spit the cloves away, like, and, just, like, bin them. Do you chew them? They're painkiller. They clean your teeth. And they're fucking tasty. I'll fucking chew them. Yes. Yeah? Love them. And you swallow them. Absolutely. All right. They're a painkiller. 
Legit. I don't know. Maybe this is why we never get hangovers from mulled wine. I don't even feel that pissed. I know you think we probably are pissed. We probably are pissed. You don't know us. But this is this is two and a half liters of wine. And we only have about like We have like three liters left, it's fine. At home. No, I meant in the jug. I was being Oh yeah. Cool. No, yeah. Again, thank you so much for watching. This is crazy. This is crazy, Rowan. We have a sex and relationships advice show. This is so mad. No, don't. Don't tell my mum. <laughs> oh, I think the mums know. <laughs> the mums know. The mums know. They're okay with it. They're okay with that. My mum said, should I watch it? And I said, no. And she said, okay. See? <laughs> <laughs> but she's proud of us. Yeah. Like, she was like, do you want me to watch the content you make? Because yeah, you're my daughter. Yeah, and I was like, I would rather you didn't. <laughs> okay. Hey, MNR. I have another question about sex. I recently listened to a podcast by Michaela Boehm, Relationship with Sex Guru. Apologies. No, no, but also love the sex questions. Good fun. And she talked about the possible downsides of female bodied people. Okay, that's actually a phrase we don't yes. use anymore. Um, oh, yeah. Because a body is not female or male, it ha just has different sex organs. So, just FYI. Uh, people using vibrators. Her argument was that cons constant use of vibrators to reach an orgasm causes women's yummy parts to become it's acclimated gorgeous. to the high power artificial stimulation and then they can no longer get off with it. She mentioned how this could lead to women being dissatisfied with otherwise pleasurable sex with their partners unless they <laughs> use the vibrator or other toys. Just wondering what you guys think of this. Okay, this is a very cisnormative question, so we're going to answer it in quite a cisnormative way. Apologies to our like trans or binary listeners and folks, and I just managed to pop my ear out. And also, I want more wine. Oh, I yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. this is my last one. Oh, yeah, I was cool. also I need the oranges in it as yeah. well. Oh, you want the? Oh, I Why eat can't them. I, do this? I literally, it's like a soup, and I eat it off. So I was gonna leave one out and be like a pirate. No, no, no. Look, you do well, the earring. I'll do the wine. Oh, we but, are able but, to do all this. But that's really the show. We are. Oh, look at our pan. <laughs> <laughs> we are multitasking girls. Yes. Okay. So vibrators. This is my specialty, I think. Uh, yeah. Yes. Well, I know. Uh, you have a vibrator? Oh my god. Did you god. pull that all over my new filters? I... Ah, oh, you bastard. Oh my god. It's fine. Fuck, it's no, fine. it's not fine. It's, it's not fine. fine. They're, they're like 60p. No, but it's not just that. It's also the table. Yeah, fuck the table. The table's made of bronze. Okay, that's broken. I am really sorry. That's broken. I think shit, most of them... Shit, no, 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 shit, no, no, shit, it's only two. I think the rest are fine. I'm going to just take a few out to dry. I'm sorry. I'm 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 sorry. Okay, I feel like I spilled something last time around as well. I'd like to fifty p to the um to to the crowd fund <laughs> for new filters. I think they're fine. Seriously, it's fine. I'm sorry. So vibrators. I thought you didn't have one. Do you have one? Well, you, I remember I told you I bought the book. Well, I have. Oh, you have a bullet. Yeah, but no, but the one before. No, as well. no okay. So, what? Well, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I have one that has been very generously uh, gifted to me by one of my exes. Oh, That's yeah, my fine. best one was gifted to me by one of my exes. Oh, <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> Good present, by the way. Good present. Yes. Yeah, if you want to please people. Though, I have a friend. Don't, don't go too far with that shit. I, had a, I have a friend who was given many, many, many um, sex toys by their partner, and then when they broke up, demanded them all to be posted Shut back. the front door. Oh, yeah. Shut the front oh, door. Yeah. No, that didn't happen. Yeah, that happened. Are you making this up? And to make it even better whilst keeping it anonymous, is they threatened that if my friend did not post them back, no. they would write to the head of my friend's university department. I wanna like, I wanna like punch them real hard right Oh yeah, now. they're a terrible person. So the point is, it's great getting vibrations. No, no, no Rowan, tell person. me you're making this I'm not up. making this up. I'm genuinely not, they were blackmailed into posting like sex toys back to their ex. That's so dark. That's yeah. so dark. Yeah. People are scumbags, <coughs> man. Like, people are fucking scumbags. Yeah. You have one. <laughs> I, think all, I think they'll dry and they'll be yeah, fine. Yeah, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Apologies. No, no, no. Um, um, but I'm thinking, should I get some... Look, everything is fine. That's just water. It Water dries. Is that okay? Yeah, there? yeah, yeah. Um, so, vibrators. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a gift. So, vibrators. <laughs> <laughs> I have... Um, I actually have this concern myself. I've had this concern myself for the last 10 years that I've been using vibrators and it's a continuing concern and I can continue to come from people going down on me. So, yes, overstimulation is a thing. Desensitization? 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 Look, for millennia, we thought that women, well, 
people yeah. with labia come from um, penetrative sex. I think as a slave, we're beginning to debunk that myth. I think it's something silly, like 12% of women actually do just chum like that. Yeah. I think I but mentioned the only also reason in, the sh- in the show as well. I think I've done that three or four times in my life. But also happen. the only reason they do is because of the place in which their clitoris exactly. is. So it's still a clitoral orgasm. This is the thing. 100%. Like, it's not like it's a magic different thing. It's just like, yeah. But, um, yes, vi- a tongue cannot match a, a vibrator because that's just a machine trying to match a human and we've all watched 2001 A Space Odyssey. It's just not possible. You fucking nerd. No, I haven't. No, not if I, but I know the gif. <laughs> right. The point is that, like, you know... Robots are not better than humans, everything. Like, we've all watched many films about robots being better than humans. Mm. I, robot, I don't know. Wally. Is he better than. Well, he's nicer, yeah. He's nicer. I mean, cool. I mean, they were nice by the end. But only with the robot's help. This is where we. This is the point where we're, like, a bit drunk. But the point is, like, okay, I can't tell whether you are a person who has a clitoris who is concerned for yourself or you're a person who is going down on people and not feeling satisfied and trying to make excuses. Look. I think. Okay, this is so awkward because like I have a lot of thoughts, but I also like worry about my own privacy. Well, I don't worry that much because clearly I do the show stuff. So. Uh, yeah, we blocked that. <laughs> but um, I know it's basically it's embarrassing, and this is it. This is it. This is it. And like it's embarrassing for us young women that are on the market and are sexual to admit that. Sometimes it's not just like, yeah, three thrusts and you come. Like, because the porn industry uh, kind of makes you feel like if you're not that, then you're somehow normal. Really, to get back to the basics, that is pretty much it. So the fact that we're, you know, ha- having these conversations is extremely brave and there are the nuances in it as such. I think we had established the fact that they, you know, like, clitoral stimulation is, is, is something to go for, you know, that, that is the, the key as such. But basically, in the past three months, and it's weird, three months mm. it's been trickier than for many for the, you know for many years since I've begun to really explore myself is it yes and um I have no idea what it is I'm thinking maybe it's age because again to be fair age is a thing so I mean maybe for some it isn't maybe I was, I'm thinking like I'm 28 I'm, I'm thinking like maybe I'm I've peaked maybe it's on the way down or something I mean our bodies do wear out like for sure, and so but we get become less sensitive. Our taste buds are less sensitive than we were kids. That's why we eat chili sauce, and we couldn't when we were five. Like, but so it's complicated, right? Because it's so embarrassing to admit. Because like you know, the 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 ideal woman, of course, is just like you know the fucking I know nineteen year old that comes after three thrusts. And like if you're more complicated than that, that's just like that's faff, right? Yeah. Like that's not sexy. That's terrible. And 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 so it's so it's so embarrassing to even talk about. The thing is, though, this. when I was sixteen, I was lucky enough to have a boyfriend that would go down on me at 16 year old which is like quite rare I think and I would take about 45 minutes I take less time now but also I've watched more porn now and right now I visualise stuff where back then I would just visualise him no no oh. like a train a train I would visualise a train coming towards the tracks and the tracks were golden and I'd get more golden and they came closer to me I love like, you pure, so like, much right now imagery. I love you so much right now <laughs> but the point is now I visualise like real kinky scenes right and so I get off quicker but I have also been using a vibrator for 10 years so, on the one hand, I actually take less time to come, but on the other hand, I have more, like, mental stimulation than I did then. So, honestly, if someone's using my ten times a day, I'm, I'm in- inclined to think, yeah, it does have an effect on your... On, on, it does have an effect on the longevity it takes so. to attain orgasm. I would say yes. On the other hand, I've used vibrator for ten years, so I have really no objective measure, except the fact that I can still come. Woohoo! I've ordered a bullet... I received a bullet two months ago. I don't know. I like tried bullets. it. Exactly. Like, I didn't know it was going to be that no. intense. I tried it a couple of times. I was just like, this is going to burn my clit off. Yeah. Basically, like, I'm like, I'm shelving it. This is too much. And also, they're like, not pleasant to hold because your fingers vibrate as well. Yeah. And the whole situation is just not cool. Well, I mean, again, this was just like what people were recommending. So it was like, I'm going to Yeah, try. I bought one of those. That's one of my first ones I but bought. But I do think that they do desensitize you. Bullets, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I have a, the, like, magic wand one, which is the, like, one... The, the one. It's the one that my lovely ex-partner got me. To be fair, we should be talking about... It's yeah. funny, like, we have this relationship that is very intimate, such, but we don't necessarily, well, like, show enough, ours to each other. He wanted to get me the actual magic wand, the uh, Hitachi, which is the famous one. But in, it's actually illegal in the UK. Wow. So we got a knockoff from the, like, um, feminist sex shop in Hoxton, because we're yeah, those kind of anarcho-hipsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I've got but an anchor and I recommend. Is that the like one in a pink, one in a stink? How do I do this? <laughs> I don't know. But is it external? It's all over the shop. Okay. Oh, okay. I mean, I have to figure out what the anchor yeah, is. Yeah, but there. honestly, I haven't, I haven't utilized the whole everything of it because it's just like this is the thing. Too much. I had honestly, I had a lot that were designed for penetration, and I just used them on clip because I like actually didn't like the feeling of penetration as much. So that's like again a preference thing. Like, but my magic wand is great because the handle doesn't vibrate, so your hand doesn't feel like too intense. It's so funny because on episode one we would never discuss this. We were so coy. Were we? We were so coy. But also, I think our questions were less raunchy. Yeah, it's because, yeah, yeah, this is what happens. We're now about. And when we should point about six months ago, we were like, the questions are too raunchy. We want more political ones. Yeah, and, and then, then we look at us now. Yeah. But um, anyway, the point is maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I don't know what perspective you're speaking from. So if you're trying to use this to like guilt trip a partner into not using a vibrator, fuck you. Yeah. You, like, I've been using vibrator for 20 years, I can still come if someone goes down on me. If you're someone who, is, who has a clitoris and is worried that you're being less stimulated, Try going a few days, a few weeks without, and see if that makes a difference. If you have someone who's ready to go down on you, or if you use your fingers, I don't know, I don't even think it's Use lube, a lot of lube. Oh yeah, I always use lube. Well, like on everything, all the time. Yeah, even though when I, when I masturbate, I use lube. Oh, right. Yeah, because I, I, I only ever do it with my rate, I don't do it with my fingers. I'm still on the fingers. I've masturbated with my fingers about five times in my entire life. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, that's what I mean, that's why I think I'm a good case study for this, because I'm, sure. I've been pure vibration for not analog basically digital yeah. <laughs> not digital I mean I don't the thing is I try doing analog Mechanic. but it takes no. long and and I like I have to focus on that so I can't focus on the imagery and it's just like faff I'm just a very lazy yeah. person you know you're not anyways but I'm like Netflix rather than reading a book <laughs> like that's you're a your doctor anyhow I'm a doctor of, you are I'm not a doctor no not yet but you're I'm a doctor that. in three years if yeah, I pass exactly. yeah but as in like you are quite a book reader like basically maybe you can't see this but this entire room is just it's just Ron's books no these are Norman's books my books are in the front room yeah yeah well I was I was trying to create yes but both yeah anyway the point is as the analogy goes I don't know which side of the people you are but like don't use it excuse to not get on your partner because okay. if you care they will still come and if you're worried about not coming yourself you can take a break of your operator if you like okay but these are basic not there's a difficult for us to discuss because intimacy and shit. But okay, so to go to the deep end as such, there is a whole discourse out there for reals about people. Um, I I'd say especially dudes perhaps that watch a lot of porn that are feeling they're desensitized to mm. the real life imagery. That is probably an issue. And so, how do we tackle that? But hence they get that you know they get the instant relief and and so I I don't I don't know. It's so complicated, right? Like I mean I think. I think you and me have been conscious. We we have made a conscious decision to not go to the point where we are completely desensitized, and yes. that takes a bit of discipline. Yeah, I make sure I masturbate with that porn like fairly often, because I'm I'm concerned that if I only masturbate with porn, I would only be able to masturbate with porn. I yeah, right. With porn. Like that is yeah, that is a decision I've made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, so we're capable of making those decisions, yeah. but not everyone can. And so, um, so basically not to really belittle people that, that are going through those really tough issues and women that are having to deal with their men they cannot be satisfied and vice versa and shit. And so it definitely is a problem we have fully, fully recognized. Yeah. I think it really comes down to your discipline and, and or... In your war- awareness of your own body and your own desires and how... And your own patterns. So, th- okay, so even again today I got... So it's further argument. <laughs> no, not arguments, to be fair, but like... Basically, Stoya, a really, really uh, famous porn actress, was has made a claim that porn addiction is not a thing. They really, there, there are, you know, there, there's OCD, there are um, compulsive behaviors, you know, there, there are mental health issues or whatever. But like, porn as a thing is not really the addiction as such. It's like the world that you build around it. That is. I think porn is a compulsion. So my and and basically, I made an. I I was like, I think gaming is similar because the way that I see a real addiction, I suppose, is like. This is why I don't touch heroin, because I know that will physically affect my body, that will fuck me up, all of that stuff. Whereas, I've seen people use utilize porn and not be addicted, I've seen people, I, people myself, I know all of that, like, and, and, and play games and not, not be addicted. Like, there's not that 
straight away compulsion, whereas this is so bodily intensive. This is not to talk about the very, very specific video game companies that actually really utilize no, it's your, like, contextual, part, right? you know, they literally have psychologist teams that are, like, know how to fuck with your brain, of course. Yeah. And this was a facetious tweet as such. Like, I, I, I knew what But it's was entirely contextual about what else is going on in your life, how often you have access well, to Well, so that thing, would be my argument, because I, I think, like, real physical addiction, and you know, that, that comes with substances substances that are like there's it doesn't matter how great your mental health is like at all no, but for like, example gambling is up. an addiction so and I that's not a substance no, but gambl- okay so i would argue so many people okay to be fair i am really uneducated to talk about this but i again from a class position i would argue that gambling is only an addiction because you think that your material condition is going to improve and i think this is the catch so, I think there's a thrill element. Oh, of course, but the thrill is that you're going to get rich. You don't get that with gaming. Sure, you don't sure, get that with see, porn. You, with gambling, no, but, it's just like, I'm going to get rich. But I mean, it's the... With heroin, it's bodily. But the gambling is just like, I'm going to be calm. But I think it's the ado- endorphin. And then I'm going to quit. Then I'm going to... Of course, endorphins. But you're going to get endorphins from anything. No, but I think it's the endorphin that hooks you rather than the chance of getting rich. No, and of course, but you're going to get endorphins from the gaming, from the porn, from encounters with other people, from the person. You can get addicted to so many different yes, things. Yes, I agree. Yes, but the, the thing with gambling is just like, it's your one promise that you're going to be rich. That's so different. That's like but not that's endorphin. Not what that's like class you. changing. I don't think... I think it is what... Well, again, really uneducated. So I am fully, fully... Take this conversation as not like some like expert talking about it. And to be fair, you should really be looking into some incredible work that Matt's our cousin and the Labour Party have... To be fair, even the annoying Tom Watson has done around the gambling issues, and that's really fucking solid. And to be fair, they call it ga- gambling addiction, and I fully, fully, I think this is the the dictionary that I should be utilizing. My only thing is just like I can totally see how one would be addicted to to the one outlet they have to escape their class position. I just don't. <coughs> and whereas the porn <coughs> and or gaming doesn't like that. do that. I don't know, I guess game, um, gambling addiction is a more personal thing for me because I've had members of my family who have ruined their lives through gambling addiction. Mm-hmm. So I would not um, abstract it as mu- or like macro alcohol, it as me, much as, 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 um, as making it about class purely. I think it is more complicated than that. Regarding porn and video games, I think, yeah, it's, it's about compulsion more than... It, it's about feeling like you can only achieve a certain emotional state through doing that thing. Which I would argue is similar to drug or alcohol addiction. An emotional state, be it That's happiness, or be it, like, fulfillment, or be it just content. There are endorphins, and then there are, like, legit chemicals that, like, keep your, like, your body, like... But why is one more legit than the other? Well, because... Okay, so I think the, the gaming and porn can be entangled, like, can be unpacked by certain lack in 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 security than you have in your lifestyle per se but then um, there have been people with like secure relationships and secure like you know fine middle class job blah blah, blah who've developed a porn addiction and said they're ruining their life like and breaking up their relationships and losing their jobs and stuff okay okay how do okay how do i break this down this is purely 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 subjective and completely un you know unprofessional on that the way that I've classed it in my head was like drugs, alcohol, really physical, drugs more than fat, alcohol, drugs, and I mean hard drugs. I mean heroin, you try it mm. once, you're fucked. Gambling in my head is really just like the one attempt to really become rich, though there's the endorphins. And then I see gaming and porn is just like, it's something that makes you feel better in a difficult situation that you're already in. Not to say that the others aren't as well, but like they are not as, as dependent on your real, real, real like life conditions as such, whether that's health and or class. So I'm be- basically I'm saying it's levels. So surely yeah, you I can put them all levels. as surely maybe you can put them all under addiction. Perhaps sure. I, I just I, I worry that again, like one doesn't equal the other, right? It's so there there's this there's again, there's certain porn There are certain games that you can never get addicted to. There's certain porn that like um, yeah. yeah, so it's whereas with heroin it's all of it. Yeah, no heroin is a very like specific 100%. thing. It's just it's a few a, a it's body just thing. That's yeah. that. It's in your and system. Your system is gagging like, for it. And with gambling, like I can totally see, and this is why I've never tried it because I know that I would get hooked because I would just want to like win big, but it's only because I want to get rich. 
and so you always try and it's just like it's 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 the same it's similar to like what our person was saying that they were like I don't know thousands of pounds in debt for their student loan but they're and they want to try and finish this course but they can't but they have to because they have to like overcompensate for everything that they've already no, lost. No, I mean, I would definitely not argue that it's um, a friction that, like, mostly affects the working class or damages their lives it's in a sort of, Yeah, way. it's like an anxiety that you have that you're, like, built in you that that's, like, one way to change your and people's lives around you, you know? Like, whereas you don't have that feeling with, the, with, 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 with gaming and porn. And, you know, and or definitely not... You don't. Honest. It's something about the relationship between... But money, again, that's a compulsion... But that's, yeah, OCD and compulsive behaviors, that's a different thing. But it's not just a compulsion, it's... It's funny how we went from that to this, by the way. It's... I had a phrase earlier in my head that I thought was super snappy, but I've lost it now. It's about compulsion plus something else, but I can't remember the other thing I was going to say. No, 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 of course. It's, it's just... Anyways, apologies that we even went there. Um, actually, no, no trick. It's like but a lack. Yeah, Sorry? Yeah. Like, it's compulsion to do a thing, but also a lack of another thing. Like yes. fulfillment. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but then going back to the sexual context, it's just like, you're doing those things because you can't get them anywhere else. And what if you just really like that thing? What if your orgasm that you get from fucking vibrator is way better than you get from... Right, I else? think about that a lot as well. Yeah, what? like, I actually don't think it's about that, but I do think it's different. It's not the same orgasm as I get from someone going down on me. It's a different experience, and I like it equally, actually, but in a different way. I wouldn't ever replace my vibrator with just another person, and I would never replace just another person with a vibrator. Well, yeah, they're like, yeah, they're like, well, like different drinks, like getting drunk yeah. on vodka is different from getting drunk on beer or whatever. But the point is, no matter whether you're the person with someone with like this, or the, you're this person, like, I would not worry about it, and if you feel like you are getting sensitive, take a break. Yes, and I, I think something to be said about discipline around these... The, these, um, yeah, just be um, aware of yourself, be aware of your body, be aware of your compulsions but again. then again, like, you go to the really, really far spectrum, like, people are just only able to have sex with dolls because that that's that, you know? And Yeah, that's what I mean, be aware, like, yeah. But then again, is that an issue? I feel like it would be really judgmental to say that it is. I think like, it's only an issue it. What's if an they're... Issue? What's I, the issue? I think the issue is only if they are doing that because they can't... They feel like that's the only option. It's about options, right? Yeah, Same with masturbating true. and sex. That's like, really true. Yeah, it is I, I will. Yeah. I will wank because I want to. I will not wank because it's the only thing I can do. Yeah, correct. Correct. So, so basically, which is a difficult conversation, I suppose, for you to have, it's just like, if that's their choice, that's their choice. Mm. For us, it has been our choice necessarily, so that's why we diversified the tactics. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, um, yeah, different strokes for different folks. Yeah. Should we do one more, or...? Yeah, wait, wait, I'll just 10 to 12. I think one more, max. Yeah, we have 1.6 gigabyte left, so okay. one, one left. Um, right. Can you read it? Yeah. I'm gonna eat out this. I'm just... I eat this stuff, go away, I like a soup. Okay. Hello, Mary, I'm dead. Rude. No, I think they Forgive were thinking of me if add you more. already answered this question. I just started using Tinder and I have been getting a nice amount of matches, but I've been having lots of trouble starting conversations and keeping them going. I've had a lot of interesting things to talk about. My first message, I usually try to make it about something that's in a girl's profile. But like one third of the women I message don't even reply back. Some do, but then stop at different points. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. Also, if a woman writes in a profile that she is looking for someone casual, is it a bad move to ask if she wants to meet up? You're so dismissive and how you mean. I subtly mentioned BDSM to a girl after she said she was into it in her profile and she unmatched you shortly after. I'm wondering what's that about. We have done this. Yeah. I'm sorry, like, it's a lovely question and you went into a lot of depth, but if you want hints on how to rewrite your Tinder profile, we have a service. We have a service um, that's really, really taking off now, actually. Yeah. And that's separate from... Um, we paying us for this content, anyways. People, um, we 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 create profiles for people on Tinder for uh, one hundred and fifty pounds each. Photos, blub, yeah. tips. But the point is, what am I doing yeah, wrong on Tinder dating? Is something that we just we just have covered. Like I don't have anything to say to this. Yeah, no, no apologies, and it's so awkward because like we're extremely thankful for your viewership. Uh, but, you know, there are so many... To be fair, like, we're not the first ones doing, like, sex and relationships advice show. Like, there are no. plenty of those podcasts you'll find. And those people have created... You know, they have 
they have um, sponsorship deals and or they're on podcasts, yeah, with their adverts and or they have Patreons. So basically they can probably take this full time yeah. and really repeat these sort of questions and take them fully in as such. Yeah, um, we're both just home from work. Yeah, as you can tell, we're... And look... Please watch our ones about Tinder dating that we have quite a lot of. And if you still feel like there's something unique to your question, and there may well be that we haven't picked up on, then just rewrite the question, but with that unique thing. Absolutely. In, in the, and we will, we will endeavour to ask. We never dismiss a question if we don't feel like we, we can't answer it. Because we, we can't answer this originally. There's actually been about two or three questions even today that the ones we discussed where mm-hmm. I was like, well, I don't think we need to do this. I mm-hmm. think we've done this. And I was like, no, I think there's at least one sentence in here that like, we can spring into yeah. a conversation. And we fucking have, because we and just we have, talk. We talk all the time. <laughs> but, like, yeah. If you have something unique about this situation for you that you haven't seen in our other videos about how to do Tinder dating, then please, please just resubmit yeah. with the extra thing, and we will... And again, it. like, it's not like you have to watch full episodes. They are all also made mm-hmm. into segments, like... Yeah, so sorry, but um, it's just we also want to keep the viewership of the people that are, you know, watching the full episodes and for just repeat the same shit that's fucking boring. Yep. And to be fair, today's show has been really helpful in terms of like, uh, you know, talking about quite a few things that I didn't expect we would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so definitely. It was quite a that whole gambling thing was left field. Well, yeah, that was quite. <laughs> I, know, to be fair, and I feel quite insecure over this because I definitely kind of made. Quite, no, we were just talking from our perspective, as yeah, we always do. Yeah, seriously, guys. Um, and I think this is a really lovely relationship that we do have with our viewers, where you realise our limitations and the fact that we're coming from our very subjective experience, from our experiences and our opinions. Mm-hmm. And also, I'm making the mistake of like connecting with my real life Twitter, which is meant to be professional. Um, but to be fair, I'm also super lucky. I'm getting incredible gigs out of it. As 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 you know, um, I know some of you may know, I'm also doing fine. I'm doing just fine. But um. Yeah, I don't know. It, it was just the whole putting myself out in the job market that I found a bit tricky, but it's also, you know. But Mariam is setting up a Patreon, and if you aren't watching that space, what are you even doing here? I, it's, it's, I, 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 I will say that I have found in the past couple of years a lot of people very monetarily benefiting from my work, and I'm finding it difficult because I am still very much stuck in the ruts, and, uh, and it's because a lot of time... Because I'm quite outspoken. So I'm fucking myself over. I know that. But if there are people wealthy enough that would be able to just like, I don't know, create me as this voice of, 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 of dissent in this really odd industry that we're in that is now bigger than film and music combined, then yeah, watch the space. And I think this month I, I, I would like for us to... And it's not just me. Like It's not going to be an individual patron per se. First of all, 10% is going to go to AAA. But second of all, I want to basically bring back La Flata, but in a bigger way than just the video. I want it to be an advocacy group at some point to, mm. to really counter corruption in the games industry, as yes. such, of which there is a lot. So, I mean, <laughs> it's complicated because, like, why would you put that money into someone that also talks about you know mo jobs a lot of times out but people can have multiple interests yeah yeah who knew well look should we do another one or oh, are we, we? no nah, i mean i don't know i feel like it's end games i think it's end games i think we've done the the bits and look we have still got this yeah exactly i'm not like um do you want to? yes please put the interest um I think we still have a couple of leftover, you know, please send in non-repeat questions to us as well. Um, again, as always, we're so thankful for your audience. Thank you. Sorry for the hiatus, for the people that sent us in the questions months ago. We will get to the rest of the ones that have already been submitted that have been covered in the next two and a half weeks. Yeah, we're making like sort of like we're scheduling a few shows. In it's the- basically since we started, when we started a year ago, I was completely unemployed. Now I have three jobs, and so Marianne very kindly is often <laughs> saying that we should schedule, and it's basically me just being a bit of a fuck monkey and... No, you're like legit, like, really a real person, and so that, with like life and stuff. We, we do still love you, we are still here for you, we do still care about answering questions, it's just more a question of scheduling it and making sure we're not just completely overwhelmed by our other work and other jobs and still have time to actually give you the time that you deserve, because... We don't want to rush this and be irritable. We want to love this and be your friends because yeah. the we whole point of this, this is that we are friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want this to be just a hangout for you yeah. guys with us. I Which mean, it has been. And yeah. it's like, it's crazy. Always, always, it's, it's just it's mad. It's always that like it's, this. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just mad that 
again, how it began, you're probably going to see the what, episode one in front of this exact. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, have a look at it and yeah. see how much we've got, see how much my hair has grown. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I had a fringe, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. So how much we've grown our confidence yeah. and giving our dice ball, so we still love it. Yeah. I don't, there was something really pure about that first episode where we're just like, now it's very much like question, answer, question, answer. But we, it's with the, true. Yeah, we're a bit more mercenary miss, now. Mm, we're a miss of that uh, from that one was our real fucking despair from the state of the left and the uh, state. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like uh, the way that the left is really terrible at at addressing these mm. situations. What well, these these parts of our of our emotional life. How really all of this is, is also just an investment for us to have a new generation of awesome men that are not growing to be terrible. Like, I was saying the other day, like, I was absolutely fine with the alt right was, like, hoovering up, like, like nobodies and losers. But, like, the alt right is now hoovering up, like, I believe, I believe lawyers that are really hot, which is yeah, just, like, not okay rude. anymore. Like, that's not okay anymore. Now I'm like, I am I'm not okay with this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, we definitely are... The project is still the just line. as important as it was a year ago, if Mate, not more. More, even yeah. more. So if we can create empathy and sort of like give solid advice, um, then that's that's always yeah. It's it is very much a solid project. We just want yeah. to we just want to get laid yeah. very, really well. <laughs> and a very small scale, and you know we answer like ten people from around the world questions at a time, which is obviously like a minutia. But to think that more people can watch those and learn from those and love those and talk to their friends about it. It's like, we don't just want you to talk to your friends to, like, get us more, like, retweets, because although that helps, we want you to talk to your friends because the whole point of this is spreading a culture of, like, cool sex and great relationships and, like, you know, like, respectful friendships. That's... Yeah. That's what our is. organising. Yeah, um, revolutionary orgasm. Yes. That was... Yeah, and it's, it's again, I, I don't know, I just think... I'm sorry to be all cheesy. I just think, like, the... A lot of the time, those can be quite performative, but because I think me and Rowan also like live together, it's just like you can really see that this comes from like a perspective, like per- perspective of pure like, like love and respect. That there's like there's no, yeah, there's so, there's no superficiality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. not trying to impress anyone. Yeah, we were actually talking the other day. We were just saying like, we. We just like talk about this all the time, anyways. It's just like we get to film this in front, of, not these yeah. particular questions, but like it's but a privilege issues. to be able to like, I guess, film this in front of you guys, but such. But like, this is just the relationship that we have, and yeah. I know. Um. I, anyways, I was I I get cheesy and drugged by the album. I'm like I could never do this without. Yeah, no, it's like, so no true. One else. <laughs> so, you know, it's funny. I saw a thing on Left Tube posting, which well, you know the same thing where they're saying like, what are things that bother you? And one of them was like. I really don't like it when people just like let themselves run on and talk without any editing, and I was like, <laughs> oh shit, <laughs> lol. That's us, but we. That's why we're different in a way, though. Yeah. We're not shiny and polished. We're not content polished, bless us all. Like, and there are different spaces with different types of content, and I think the type of content we make is something we will feel comforted and reassured by, and. Yeah. And it's also nice to see two women not competing and actually like speaking the same amount and like yeah. actually having actually, huge solidarity. How many YouTubes are YouTubers are actually like a duo, rather than just someone like I know they were friends and stuff, but that's an interesting point. Mm. And though it's always drama and shit, but like I don't yeah. know, it's all it. And it's, it's a special relationship. And but uh, you know, again, it's always. Not that this, but like we're always still very much dependent on like how fun this feels as yeah. such. So, so please yes. make it fun for us. Yeah. And r- reminded that we are down to one mic now, so if you could please, 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 if you have the capacity, all we want is to buy a new, yeah. like, double jack thing so we can have both mics up working. Yeah. This was from, like, as yeah. the, like, big plastic bottle as well. Like, not plastic, not plastic bottle, plastic, well, a paper. Oh, yeah, also, uh, like, we did box. buy, like, a box of wine. We do this every time. We spend a lot of money and alcohol to make this fun for you. <laughs> Like we don't, we don't. Or to much. shed responsibility. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we're not asking for twenty five thousand a month. We would love it if we got that, oh but we are God. just asking for like, please make it that we're not making a loss. Yeah, if you can, that'd be nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Love you very much. All the best.